Yep, mid conversation English. Yep, sure, why not? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's a really good game. I was playing it quite a lot recently. And uh, I kept restarting because I kept figuring out better way of doing stuff. Because it always turns out that, you know... Uh, when you centralize your transportation system, it is much more efficient. Like, you know, like, getting everything, like, it was, because I thought, like, oh, I had to build, like, a thing from every factory into the town and stuff like that, but instead, like, I built up one and made, like, a basically a huge distribution center out of, like, a highly upgraded resource and then just flew it, transported it all over the world. Mm. Yep. Yep. What's up, Sam? I've been muted this whole time. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have I been muted? Did you? No. Oh, they're no. on my side. Okay. I've been able to hear you. I forgot to nice. unmute myself. <laughs> I was saying I wanted to make this stream um, uh, kind of for, for newer people who maybe haven't played this game before um, and, and kind of explaining uh, what the game is and, and why I like it so much because I really like this game. I've been playing it a lot uh, recently. Yeah. Hey, Chris for best Twitch. I thought your name had Christ in it. And for and I for some reason I started thinking about Christ for Arms that parody VHS tape. If you ever seen that? No, no, I haven't seen that. It's made by this guy on uh, Instagram who makes like a lot of really funny stuff. I forget his name though. Um, it's just like a it looks like a like a Christian VHS tape, and it's called Christ for Arms. Uh, and uh, it's just like a, an animated movie about a, a white Christian boy who was born with crosses for arms. Oh, no. And all the children at the playground bullied him and they threw <clears throat> beans at him. Uh, and the movie features uh, three exclusive uh, EDM tracks from Dando. Or Daldo. Daldo is his name, yeah. <clears throat> I don't know why that is <laughs> such a random thing to be reminded of. Uh, nice. Chris Forbes Twitch. Uh, well, welcome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, welcome. So, yeah, Transport so Fever 2. Well. Uh, I played a lot of City Skylines, um, like, since it came out, basically. I, I I liked City Skylines a lot. Mm. Kind of what I didn't like so much about it is just how shitty I was at designing cities. Um, yeah. I what I like what I liked about City Skylines was transport, like setting up, 
you know, public transport lines, trains and buses and trams and like moving people around. It was something like very satisfying about seeing like, oh, 100 people want to go over here. Well, they have this many options and this is the one that they pick. And, and I, I really like that. Mm-hmm. Tropico, I also liked, but it doesn't have trains in it. Uh, it only yeah. has buses, and the bus system is really clunky and bad in Tropico, mm. uh, which is kind of uh, sad. I feel like Tropico. Work, workers and resources, <clears throat> they have a really, really in-depth uh, transportation system. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so Transport Fever 2, uh, basically, you don't really... Or necessarily, you don't have to get involved with the designs of cities or or anything like that. You set up transport routes, moving people and cargo um, between different places. And you get paid depending on how fast you can move things uh, and how far they move. So if you move something from way over here to way across the map and you do it very quickly, uh, then you get paid a lot of money. Um, and all of these little icons that you see are industries uh, that you can uh, focus on if you want. Some people just focus on transporting people around, which is a viable way to play the game, I think. Industries do mm. help, though. Yeah, because, because if you if you click on the title of the cities, yeah, their growth is like dependent on like they get more growth the more resources you provide for them, right? Yeah. So, but you Wolburn, also got to keep pollution down and stuff like that as well because that. Hmm. The wool burn over here. Um, they want fuel and tools, and if they get that, then uh, their city growth will increase. And I I think it's also like. I, th- I could be wrong, but I think if you provide uh, cargo for the commercial districts, then the commercial districts will grow. And then if you provide for you know, if you provide cargo for the industrial districts, then they will grow. And if you provide for both, then both will grow along with residential. I think that's yeah. the case. I could be wrong. Uh, yeah, I, I think so. Um, yeah. Uh, so here you can cause... see. Um, yeah, that one you see, and then you see how much they need and stuff like that. Yeah. You see, you have industrial buildings along here. These green ones are residential. And then down here, you have commercial. And the commercial districts want tools, and the industrial want fuel. And the residential don't want anything. They just want to be able to go to the store, go to work, go back home, maybe travel to other cities and stuff. Mm. And they will take whatever alternatives you provide for them. All the cities start out with this, uh, these really long, winding country roads that some people have cars. In 1850, almost no one does. But eventually, people get cars, and they will drive if they have no other way to get where they want to go. Um, but cars are slow. Trains are fast. And... Yeah. yeah. So I like, uh, I like using the ships uh, yeah. for... Uh, <clears throat> I like using the ships a lot. The ships are good at moving and keeping uh, factories stocked uh, yeah. with a lot, so it's really convenient when there is like. I like also pulling stuff with trains into a shipping lot and then using the ships to ship them out um, yeah. to different places. Yeah. Uh, so what I'm looking for uh, is kind of a nice place to start. Um, which would be some kind of chain uh, would allow us to to provide stuff. So over here, we have a quarry, which we could bring a line down here to this construction materials plant, and then it can make bricks, and then bring that over here to Hartlepool, and sell the bricks over there. Also, Folkstone mm. also wants bricks. That's viable. Not the best because if you bring a train from Tridley Quarry to Tridley Construction Materials Plant, that's profitable. 
And then you pull the bricks from here all the way to Hartlepool. That's mm. profitable. But then the train has to run empty all the way back. And that's not profitable. Yeah. Uh, so it is a complete chain, but it's maybe not ideal. Uh, uh, I, I want to find a nice city that uh, we can use to like demonstrate how stuff works in the game. Um, where's this? Norton Radstock. Yeah, this looks good, actually. So we got a farm over here, a food processing plant, and then they want bread. And then they also want fuel, and we have a petroleum, uh, an oil well here. Bring that over here, refine it, bring it back over here, make fuel, and then bring it down here. So then we got two fuel, uh, two industries we can supply them with, and did over here. They also want bread. They also have a farm. Mm. We could even use their farm. Uh, bring stuff down here to the food processing plant and then bring food back up to them. Uh, yep. and the rule you can see here, rule for food processing is two grain makes one bread. So if mm. you have two farms, that's ideal for one food processing plant. And then the more you supply, uh, industries can actually level up. So these two, the farms, they don't level up. They are set at 300 production. They, that's just how much grain they make. So that doesn't yeah. change. But the food processing plant, if you supply enough, uh, if you both supply enough grain and you sell off the, gr the bread that is made, then the industry will level up and it will be capable of taking in more Rain. So then you can start connecting these other farms that are kind of spread out all around the place. Yeah. Uh, so I think we start off with 5 million buckaroos, which is pretty good. Uh, and the distance here isn't too far from this farm over to this little food processing plant. And if we look at the contour lines, uh, actually, you know what? Uh, I'm going to save my game real quick. Damn, that's a lot of saves. Yeah, no, I I like to test out different maps. Uh, takes a while before I I feel satisfied. Yeah, same, same. Uh, I think I actually have, I think, accidentally a... Uh, what is it called? Uh, landscaping. Yeah, here we go. Had a, a, a cheat mod on that turns disables the cost of landscaping because uh, um, I was landscaping in a in a map for. You can make rivers in this one, right? I never tried. I never tried doing landscaping really. I don't know. I haven't tried that either. It feels like it would be really expensive. Yeah. Oh yeah, the loading is going to take well because I have a lot of assets because I like decorating my cities. What's that, Beijing? I was thinking about getting that as a sound alert as well. <laughs> have you seen Hakim's new video about cars? Yeah, I just watched it, actually. Uh, it's very good. I like the editing. I, I think he said he, he worked with an editor for this one. It's nice. very good. It's so always Hakim is, is um, both intelligent and hilarious. Yeah. But of course, uh, he is, a, he is a, a slightly different kind of leftist than I am, so I actually hate him. No, you're a closeted Marxist-Leninist. <laughs> yeah. Alright, <clears throat> so the reason that I, I turn off the landscaping, free landscaping, is because uh, in, in the early game, landscaping uh, is supposed to cost a lot of money, because uh, you should pay attention to the terrain. This map is maybe not the best example. Uh, it's a very standard temperate map. It's got a lot of just like rolling plains. It's got a few mountains. But it's really not too bad, so it's a, it makes for a pretty good, easy start. I think I, I might have the 
the seed. Let me see. Yeah, there it is. When I first started playing this game, I, I used I used the the trucks and stuff too much. I figured out the trucks are really only supposed to uh, move stuff short, like short distances. Short, like uh, like if you have to unload at the train station, I have to go further into the city and stuff like that. Yeah, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, I when I first yeah when I first pl started playing I was not really thinking at all about emissions, uh, which are actually very important for cities if you want growth. Um, yeah. So you have you have to make sure that you're not polluting uh, your cities, mm. um, which you can do very easily with steam trains, for example. Steam trains uh, are very polluting. Yeah, you want to keep some distance, and then, yeah. Uh, all right, so we built a little train station over here, just a very simple cargo terminus station. This is a place where trains can pick stuff up and uh, and deposit stuff. And because we've got Thaxted over here, which wants bread. Norton Radstock over here wants bread. We've got two farms over here. Uh, I'm thinking let's future-proof this little food processing plant immediately. And we are going to put down a cargo station, not a terminus station. Rather one that has the, the road connection on the side like this. And I'll get up like this. It's that way. If we ever want to expand this line, uh, we can just add more stations. Uh, you go into here, and you just boop. You can pop down tracks, and then you can pop down platforms like this. Then you can run more lines, more trains in more different directions. You can send yeah. them all to one platform if you want, but you, it's going to get congested. Well, it's a real nice addition from like the first games. Yeah. Yeah, the <clears> mod, <throat> the modular train station. Yeah. Uh, now, let's see. If we just take this and we drag it all the way over here, the game will try to figure I out. I usually don't do that. Yeah. No, I just want to see what path the game thinks would be most efficient, mm. and then I try to kind of. Copy it. Uh, but yeah, this is a very rolling... It doesn't have a, a lot of like harsh terrain, but it goes up and down a lot. Like It's a lot of little hills, small hills. I like to, to try to keep them going along the hills as much as possible. So I do like shorter segments because it automatically adjusts yeah. like up and down. Yeah. <clears throat> We are going to plow through uh, these forests, which if this was open do. TTD would be a very bad move. Uh, because in open TTD, which this game is, is, is uh, inspired by, well, it's inspired by, by um, Transport Fever. Open TTD is the free, the modern like remake of uh, Transport Tycoon. Um, yeah, that one has uh, multiplayer too. Yeah. Yeah, I like open TTD a lot. Um, I, haven't, I haven't played it very much. I've seen, uh, I've seen other. I saw the spiffing Brit um, do it multiplayer mm. and basically cheesing it and beat all the opponents immediately. Oh yeah, yeah. No, you can be a definitely. You can be a dick uh, in multiplayer open T three. Yeah, and and this like one thing you can cheese this game as well because it's like distance yeah. that is like the so like you can literally fly stuff across the map and you'll make like ridiculous profits on it yeah <clears throat> yeah that is i think a bit unbalanced um there are mods that basically just make planes and airports a lot more expensive to mm. construct which yeah I, I think makes up for for it mm. um, i used to like eventually like airplanes, I used to do like two, 
you know, because I have these big distribution centers. So like I'd put it somewhere and then one airport would serve like a certain area of the map if I need to fly in stuff there and then from there transported it out to different cities and so on. So I only had like on the whole map maybe like three airports. Yeah. I uh I think the first time first and I mean basically every time I have ever done a passenger aircraft it's been a disaster. Because planes especially until like nineteen 19- 80 in uh, 1990 planes just can't fucking carry a lot of people they can carry like seven people yeah but everyone is like holy shit this is so fast and it goes so far i fucking love this i want to take the plane so then you have like 600 people waiting at your airport and you have one fucking propeller plane that carries seven people at a time uh so then people fucking hate you because there is uh uh, decay like people don't want to wait yeah and then uh also if a lot of people and stuff like that wait that increases pollution as well yeah uh but you know i i did one because <clears throat> like i did i did a passenger thing i connected three different airports like you know like at the edges and then one in the middle right and that one was like super profitable. It was also later in the game, like I said, good uh, good airplanes and stuff like that. And then I built like a train line, and the train line killed the 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 air airport industry essentially. Yeah. But the trains weren't as profitable as the airplanes. Yeah. So I had to end up like getting rid of the trains because like uh, the the airplanes were just just too profitable. Wow. wow, what a capitalist you are. I know. I mean, unironically, that's more or less how shit works in real life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Trains aren't very profitable, even if they're exactly. better. Exactly. Yeah, like, you know, because, I mean, as we know, right, like, uh, especially with, like, you know, people, they're, like, really trying to, to make, like, privatized... Uh, the trains and stuff like that profitable and like if you look at like england for an example it's a complete mess like they're they're just really 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 trying to make it profitable and it's just not yeah uh so so it's one of those times where like you know games accidentally like reflect like real issues like yeah. farming simulator the new one is a little better because that's seasons right mm. But like the old farming simulator, the fact that that some crops were just not worth farming, <laughs> yeah, because the price was too low, mm. uh, and that's like a real issue with food is is that it's the 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 you know the, they take subsidies and stuff like that to um, to be able to you know yeah uh, okay. I want to explain a little bit what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Um, first, I set up this line. I call it C train grain one uh, because I like putting what kind. Uh, first, C stands for cargo, and then train is because it's going to be a train, and then what it's transporting, and then I put a one because we might have more of them. And this line uh, simply goes here. To Norton Red Sox, uh, by default is set to load if available, which means the train will come into the station, pick up whatever is there, and then if nothing is there, it leaves. Full load means it will go there and it will wait until it's full and then depart. And or until maximum wait time, unless you yeah. increase it. Yeah. Uh, so it's by default set to three minutes, which is fine. Mm. Uh, and then it will go to Norton Red Sox East and deposit whatever it has. Technically, it's set to load and unload everything at both of them, right? So the game basically, the cargo and the people kind of act basically the same. So if you think of it like grain is actually a bunch of people who all really want to go to this food processing plant, uh, they, and they will take, you know, they can't drive because they're, they're made of grain. And grain can't yeah. can't get driver's licenses, but they can take the train. <laughs> uh, and so, if there is a train line, 
that can pick up grain and it goes between these two points, then the grain is like, holy shit, that's so sweet. And then the grain kind of walks and takes and waits at the platform uh, very patiently and then gets on the train and then they have their little ticket stubs. And then they, they take the train and they get off at this uh, other train station and they can go to the food processing plant. So if you click on the train station, you can see this food processing plant lights up and that's because these are close enough that if stuff gets dropped off here, then it can go here. Yeah. And then there's also a truck stop here, which means that if this building over here is making a lot of bread, then this truck stop is close enough that we, the bread can go here and then we can run a truck line that goes from here to here. Uh, and this is a very simple uh, truck stop uh, called a truck unloading stop, which is just the same as a truck stop, but you can't load anything. All you can do is drop stuff off, which yeah. is good for cities. Right? So we have trucks that are going to come here, pick up bread, drive along here, or well, get pulled by horse and buggy along here, drop stuff off here, and if you click on stop, you can see it covers in white uh, everywhere that is covered. You see all of this theoretically is covered. Uh, but these are the places that want bread. And that's what's important. So everywhere that wants bread can get bread from right here. Yep. And the reason why I, I set down a waypoint right here, which is this little sign, which is just a way to tell your vehicles to go a certain way. And the reason I put that down here is because I want the trucks to come in, drop off their bread, and then do a U-turn as quickly as possible, and leave. Because otherwise, they would come in here, drop their stuff off, and then go all the way around here. And why don't you want that? Well, these are residential buildings. People live here. People no. don't like seeing trucks or trains people don't like uh noise basically you have this thing called emissions which you won't see because there are no vehicles moving around right now yeah. um but emissions basically it's not necessarily like pollution it's more like noise pollution i think so if you have a bunch of trucks uh, like a hundred trucks just moving up and down, up and down, up and down. People are going to go fucking crazy. And they're not yeah. going to want to live in this town. Uh, yeah. Commercial and industrial areas, they don't care. You can, you can pollute them with noise all you want because they're noisy anyway. But residential, they really don't like noise. Nice. So that's why I did And that. Uh, horse farts, of course. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of horse, uh, horse doo-doo. Yeah. Uh, and then... You actually have to build depots for your vehicles. So you can put one right here. And we've got a cargo. We get this horse strong carriage. Pick up two of those. Assign it to the bread line. And I'm just going to tell it to, when you're right here, full load and just wait indefinitely. Because if you haven't picked anything up, there's no reason for you to go to the town. And then we have a train depot, which works the same way. We go in here. And we have only one locomotive available right now. So we buy that. And then we can attach gondolas. Which, uh, which region of vehicles are you using? Uh, Europe. Nice. We've got the best trains. <laughs> Yeah. The U.S. train sucks. Yeah. Like, they're so bad. Yeah. Especially when it comes to passenger stuff. Because mm. Europe got all the, the high-speed trains. The yeah, U.S. doesn't, really. Yeah, it's decided that because this stop is closer, it wants to start there. But I'm going to say, no, don't do that. Go over there. Use put the train that is used all over the world, so effective the company that made them shut them down. 
uh, fun fact, the U.S. built a train that is used all over the world, and it was so effective it got the company that made them shut down, because sooner or later the market was saturated with their trains. Hmm. Which train was it? I don't know. SE Roleplay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, so now our little train, obviously we're going to name it mm. Trainy Mc... No. Grainy McGrain Face. Because it's going to be transporting grain. Nice. And so it pulls up here. That's Fortune, then grain. name the train. Alright, I'm going to... Also, what's up, Anderson? How are you doing? There we go. Picks up the grain. And then there's a bunch of grain left over. And you can store uh, an infinite amount of grain at a platform. Eventually, it would decay. You can do some stuff to mitigate it, but... Yeah, ultimately... Uh, it's just gonna decay. Uh, so 32 km, 35 kilometers an hour. 40. Jeez. 40. Now yeah. we're moving. Now, now we're moving. Yeah. Hell yeah. Choo choo. Yeah. If we speed up, we can follow our little guy. I think we can add. Since we're not really going up any large hills, I think we can add may maybe two more gondolas. That might be pushing it though, because this the the first train really has a tough time going up hills, especially yeah. if it's carrying something heavy. You can also see like the horses is mediocre right now. Yeah, the, yeah. The strength. It comes over here, drops off the grain. We got ninety six thousand for that. Uh, if you look under finances, you can see uh, this red staple is the running cost, and then this blue is the profit. You can see that we're making a profit from this. Uh, probably not going to be a huge profit because it's a fairly short line. Uh, and this little food processing plant is going to start producing. And because these trucks are here waiting and we set up a line that takes bread from here to consumers that want them, it recognizes that, hey, I can go over here. So it puts puts bread down here for the trucks to pick up. And then they do. Pretty neat. Fascinating. Yeah. Uh -huh. And we could also pull... Uh, I mean, we might as well and put down another truck unload stop and right here is good enough set up another line goes here and then goes here we didn't even need the waypoint truck spread to faxed it I'm going to say fully loaded, and we're going to have them use, uh, each one use a different platform. That yeah. way they don't end up in a line. Queuing up all for the same platform. Let's see how our train is doing. How it will do. Yeah, 24 things of grain. Yeah, it seems to be going fine. Let's see what yep. it says. 
Medium 26 kilometers an hour. It's at a medium slope. It's not very fast, but I guess none of these are medium slopes. So it's fine. Yep. You need high speed rail for it. <laughs> yeah. And there we go. Oh, let's see here. Yeah, if you look at consumers, uh, you can see Norton Radstock and Thaxted uh, are listed here, and it says how much it decides it wants to ship to each. But these guys are waiting, even though there is bread here, they're waiting for the bread that's supposed to go to Thaxted. Thaxted gets special bread. So no. you make a special order for baguettes. All of, uh... Sawdust. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So, because there's a lot of grain here, and this food processing plant can take in a lot more of it, um, something fairly easy we can do to, you know, expand is to simply build another uh, line. Uh, so that these, this train can go back and forth, uh, right hand and uh, left handed, or, or right handed traffic, right? So it goes to a platform and switches tracks. And that will allow us to use more than one train on one line. If we mm. put a, as an, another, another train on this, uh, another train on this line, they would collide with each other because eventually they have to turn around. Yeah. Uh, instead, let's just. Pull out like this. And if you build a track parallel like this, it will simply copy all of the ups and downs and everything. And yeah. it will be exactly level with the, the first track that you made, which is very convenient. Put it like this. And then you get signals, which tell trains when to stop. And I like putting them uh, where the right hand, uh, because the incoming train is kind of becoming in on the right track. You put a yeah. signal here, and that means if there's a train right here that's waiting, uh, and there's another train coming over here, it's going to stop and wait for this train to pull out and go up here. And then we can just sort of put a signal here. Really not super necessary to put out like a bunch and bunch and bunch of... Uh, I usually don't do that. It's usually just do it at the... You know, so they wait at the ends. Yeah. Dep I mean, if you have a lot of trains, then you're going to want signals. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, uh, you're going to get a train sitting here and waiting until the other train has reached the uh, the other platform before it starts to drive. Yeah. But we've put signals uh, in dispersed like this, then you can get trains sort of following each other. Mm. So now if you look at the, this line, you can see that train recognizes that, hey, two tracks right here. I can take one of them to go one way and one of them to go the other way. Because the game is smart like that. Well. And then we can take this train and simply click uh, clone. And why don't we make two clones of it? So now we have grain in McGrain phase and train one and two because I'm, I'm too lazy to name them. <laughs> yep. And... Actually, don't need this. They're gonna go off to there anyway. And yeah, I think I actually do want to put down more signals. Here's good. Uh, and here. And that's it. All right. 
now these trains will all get moving and we'll shipping a lot more grain and eventually a lot more bread as well and theoretically nice. we're gonna be making a profit yep that's what's important now, yeah absolutely well what else is there in life I don't know that is the meaning of life yeah here we got the trucks coming in for Thaxstead the bread that they're delivering. Um, some people think, uh, or I mean, some people would be right to think that the game is, is fairly slow in the beginning, in 1850. I think, Grom, you've said you don't like playing in this era. Yeah, I, I usually start, like, in the beginning of the of the 20th century. Yeah. Um, I kind of like the... I, th I think... There's, there's something about like 1890 to 1900 or like 1910 that I like, uh, like the kinds like, of vehicles that you have and, and stuff. Yeah, I like the steam trains. It is just you don't have a lot of capital to do anything. You don't profit very much. So even if I like the trains, I can't do too much with it. <clears throat> That's my problem. Yeah, yeah it's fair enough. But steam trains are cool. Yeah. And we got a lot of bread here, and I don't want any of it to decay, so I'm going to build a cargo building. Which is going to store some of this bread. But ultimately, what we need is more trucks. So we're going to buy copies of this. So we've got four more trucks, two more for each line, even though technically one of them is shipping a bit more. But eh, it doesn't matter. It'll catch up. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, we can see the, uh, yeah, each one of these trucks is only transporting four pieces of bread. Yeah, four loaves. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> four <laughs> loaves of bread. <laughs> yeah, very large loaves though. Oh yeah. So they don't make a lot of profit because they can't carry a lot of cargo. Uh, each train on the other hand can carry 24, uh, things of grain. Um, so you need a lot of trucks uh, to transport goods, and they're usually the... never able to get like the the road vehicles. It's hard to get them profitable, but yeah, it's usually worth it. I mean, they're needed. Right. And you pick up the profit from like the trains and stuff like that instead. Yeah. Uh. You can see the city is kind of transforming a bit because as we are supplying the city with bread, uh, we're getting yeah, plus 30, plus 40 percent. So we're getting more people that want to move in. And so the city is expanding. It's building new roads, putting down new yeah. buildings, getting new people. The uh, funny thing is, like, the city, yeah. the way it expands and builds is basically... By just making swastikas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, like squares. Yeah. What's up, Bunsen? Hey, Bunsen. You can, um, when you're building a road, has the option uh, to give you ownership of the road or not. If you have ownership, then you pay maintenance. If you don't have mm -hmm. ownership, then the AI can use that road. Can upgrade it, downgrade it, destroy it, build off of it, do whatever it wants. So you can kind of guide cities to look the way you want by just building roads and giving up ownership of those roads, and the mm -hmm. cities will use them to to expand. I I never have like ownership. Like I, I didn't know that function. Right? I, it's just I get annoyed like later on when the cities get bigger and I want to like get bus lanes and stuff like that. You end up having like tear down half the city because they're yeah. just too close to the road. Yeah. It gets really expensive. Yeah. You got some people being transported. Um, we could... Let's see. We could try our hand. Uh, let's see. If we get uh, a little street... 
What is this street here? I don't even know. What street is it using? I don't know. Is it, is it a country road? No. No. Well, whatever. Uh, oh, that looks horrible. <laughs> thank you. Put down a passenger service. I'm gonna build a little uh, bus station or what bus. Uh, I guess a station. Yeah, it's not a bus stop, but a station. And I want to put it mm, not too close to the residential area, but you know where. It, it covers commercial and industrial areas. Oh, What's hey, up, Victor? What's up, Asian? Uh, let's put it like this. And put another one. See, where do we have? Yeah, commercial and industrial. Yeah, this looks good. Connect up. These two roads. Put down a little passenger station. Now this, my experience. Oh, actually, yeah. Thank you for building that road. I actually, I actually will use that. Oh, I mean the passengers are more over there, on the other side though. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Um, uh, mm -hmm. but I don't want to build. Uh, the station in the residential area. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm actually going to start off by making a line. Sorry for doubting you, Supreme Leader. Yeah, don't, don't you know who I am? I'm a master <laughs> city planner. Uh, and I like calling my buses uh, ICBs or intercity buses. Uh, oh. Which is probably only funny to train nerds. <laughs> okay, uh, Radstock to Backstead. You can rename the cities as well if you want. I mean, you could make it ICBM. Yeah. With Metrobus. In Intercity Metrobus? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna What's tell up, it to Wing? wait about yeah three minutes is good. Hey Wing, and I'm gonna buy a double decker omnibus, which is a mod that I have. It's a very popular mod actually. That's uh, <clears throat> some vehicles uh, early on in the game because normally yeah. you, you would only have the stagecoach, which only mm. cares four people. Double decker omnibus. Here's 12 people. Nice. All right. So. It's a bit OP, not gonna lie. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm gonna tell it to reverse. Go here first. And if we speed up, we should eventually. Because, I mean, this is a station that covers a lot of the city. And this also covers a lot of the city. Um, so, we're, eventually, we're gonna see people move toward the station look at this person for example he's heading for a commercial building oh no she's coming there okay maybe not yet yeah no it's passenger stuff usually takes a little while yeah uh before they start filling up but yeah no i love these games like i've been playing like these train games oh, yeah, like uh you can see sorry for interrupting you can see, um, do you not expand this? Oh, whatever. It says destination, commercial building via IC bus. So mm. this person wants to go here to this hotel renaissance. I want to stay at this hotel over here. Nice. That's a um, pretty, pretty nice hotel. I'm going to yeah. lie. Wait, is, ho or is that a mod? What? Hotels? No. No, hotels oh, are just a I normal did. commercial building. Oh, I just never noticed. Yeah. We got Murphy's Corner. 
They've got food, drinks. What does that say? Oh, food, drinks, herbs, and spices. There's another hotel, Parkview Hotel. General store, Parkview Hotel again. Uh, goods, Central Market. Saddlers. Miller's Hut. Yeah. Uh, to get that spice. I know, right? There's another Parkview Hotel. There's another oh. Parkview Hotel. <laughs> All the hotels are called Parkview. They're like Parkview. It's like a subway franchise. Like they're just <laughs> <laughs> they have a bunch on the same street. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In in era A, which is this era, until like yeah. 1920, I think. Uh, a lot of the commercial buildings are hotels. I've noticed. It's interesting. Yeah. Now well, we got. I mean, if it takes a while to travel, then it's reasonable. Yeah. So the reason why I uh, I want to sit here and wait a bit, hey. because I want to see. Oh, hello! <laughs> I like when you click on people to say hello. That's nice. Um, I want to see how people travel here. So I need it's like you're uh, stopping them in the street. It's like, can you answer a survey, please? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so if you go to uh your your layers and you click on the destination layer. And you can filter by the city that you're in. So Norton Radstock. You can see these are the ways that people are traveling. So right here, a lot of people are traveling up and down this street. A lot of people traveling right here. Not as many here. Not as many here. A few people want to go out, uh, take the country road, right? So they go, they travel here, down here, blah, blah, blah. People travel along here. Um, so this kind of gives you an indication of uh, where you should build your public transport. So a line, a simple line going up and down this street, arguably, could get be profitable. Um, especially if you just build a small stagecoach, only carrying four people at a time. It just goes up and down, up and down, up and down. Maybe it goes in here. Like it goes to the station and then it goes down here. And then up, back up. Uh, that could be profitable, and it would help people coming from industrial, uh, from or the residential area over to the bus station, without putting the bus station slap bang in the middle of the residential area because that's going to increase emissions. Yeah, people don't want to live right next to the busy bus station. They prefer bus stops. Yeah. And also, like, the, the funny thing about this game is, right, how it incentivizes having as many steps in a journey as possible, right? <laughs> uh, which is like, you know, of course, like, in real life, you want to make sure that, you know, you can just do, like, as, as, as quick, direct line. But here, it's like, especially with, like, goods, right? If you can deliver it to one place to be picked up there to go to another place and so on, you get paid for each part of it, right? Yeah. I do wish, like in, uh, you know, Railroad Tycoon, that there were train robberies during this time. <laughs> yeah. That'd be cool. Well, let's just make a little simple bus route. It goes from station down Windsor Road to Mill Lane and then back up. Uh, so the reason why I want to do this um, is because in um, so in in most cities, the way that you design public transport routes is uh, called point to point. Yeah. Uh, where instead of taking uh, this line, for example, and making it go from here to blah, 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 and then go all the way around here. Okay, so again, if we look at the, uh, the, the transport use, uh, right now it doesn't show up. It doesn't show that people are moving here for some reason. It'll show up in a second. Yeah. You can see that although people are moving here, pe the people who move here are the ones who are going out of the city. People are moving within the city. They're moving right here. 
up and down here, and then people want to get to the station eventually, once that gets popular. Um, so right here, not that many people are getting on or off. And over here, there's nothing to even do. There's nothing over here. So sending a loop all the way over here, that would just be a waste. And if we send a loop going here, uh, counterclockwise, uh, then if you want lived, uh, or if you lived, uh, if you were over here at this commercial building and you wanted to go over here, you would have yeah. to get on and then go all the way around and wait for the bus to stop here and stop here, and then you could get off. But with a point-to-point, -point, you have the bus going in both directions. So it goes down here, duh, 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 and then it turns around, and it goes back up again. Yeah. All right, so let's buy... Can you, can you rename the cities, by the way? I forgot. Yeah. Okay, I just became mayor in this town, and I'm renaming it to uh, Gromgrad. Yeah. So make sure it's not Northern Redstock anymore. It's supposed to be Gromgrad. Um, all right, what should we name the city then? Romgrad. Um, call it. Um, new. No, old Asherville. Wow. Wow. That was my city. <laughs> no, this is my city. It's called New Old Asherville? No, just uh, Old Asherville. Okay, well, the other city is mine then. Okay. Uh, Thaxted? Yeah. And now you're like, no, so the other one was old. So this one is New <laughs> Asherville. What, what was it, Gromstergrad? Grom. No, Grom Grad. Grom Grad. All right. Perfect. Oh, I got these two little stagecoaches. Uh, then I'm gonna be traveling up and down. Here, and I already got some people waiting. Yeah, new, 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 newer York. Yeah. There's so many, like, towns and cities, like, that all have the same name in the United States. Which is, like, kind of, like, we don't have that in, in Sweden, really. What's up, Ruby? Yeah. Yeah, Ameritown, Burgerville. Uh, New York used to be called New Stockholm. Really? Yeah, back when it was a Swedish colony. Then it became New Amsterdam when the Dutch bought it from us. And then it became New York. Oh, goddamn Dutch. Yeah, before it was New Amsterdam, it was New Stockholm. Or New Sweden. No, it was, yeah, no, the, the colony was called New Sweden. And the city was New Stockholm, although it was, ba I mean, it was barely a city at the time. Then it became, I think, New Holland? Maybe? I'm not sure. Yeah. Alright, uh, let's see. Look at transporting Gromgrad. We can see a lot of people traveling around here. Makes sense. Traveling to here, traveling over here, traveling down here, traveling over here. Uh, so if we put a Bus stops, bus stop here, stop here, or just right here, I think. We have that, like, um, in Ukraine, you know, Gamla Svenskbyn. Yeah. Where there's, a, like, it's like an old... What's it like colony? I guess mm -hmm. of like they still speak Swedish. Yeah. Apparently, the Russians just kidnapped their mayor. <laughs> it's said enough them about it.
It's a river that also named another river. <laughs> they were like the, the, the people that were like making the maps or like exploring or whatever. They were just real fed up. They were like, oh, I'm so sick and tired of crossing these rivers. So it's like, it's another yeah. fucking river over there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, Virginia was named to, like, because of, like, queen, the queen's virgin status. Yeah. Her you know, nickname so was the Virgin Queen. Yeah. It's kind of weird. <laughs> but I'm glad it's going to get two bus lines. Nice. Of course. I don't have a depot around here. Uh, might as well. Wow. That yeah, I, I knew about that in in Austria. But yeah, that that mayor is a major bus kill. Oh yeah, I know that. I think they had they kept having their signs uh, their signs stolen. Yeah, there was like there was um, there's like a Norwegian sketch. Or, like, there was a Norwegian from, like, eh, Norwegian Broadcasting, whatever, that went there and just walked around making puns. Mm. I bet they get that a lot. Yeah. Let's see, we got 15 people waiting right here at Mill Lane. Three people waiting here, one person waiting here, three people waiting here. Yeah, a lot of people want to go from this bus stop right here up here well that's pretty much too bad so I'm not even sure if this line is profitable I think it might be but probably not very yeah look <laughs> look at that it is yeah pretty much uh, yeah perfectly <laughs> even yeah just like we're running even and then it'll be like nope not good enough we're shutting this down yeah as I had a little bit, like less than a thousand bucks in profits. It's not, that is not, a not lot that for bad. this time. It's not. It's not really. I mean, it is like what? What? What year is it? Eighteen fifty-five. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the way that people choose which way to travel, um, something that's pretty important is uh, people take into consideration. Um, let's see, frequency. You can oh. see the frequency here of uh, the IC bus, which we should rename IC bus Old Asherville to Bromgrad. $33,000 a month for one line. That is pretty good, I would say. $33,000 is that equivalent to today for a month oh. <laughs> on one line. That is pretty yeah. good. Yeah, sure. <laughs> then you have to consider we also have to build the, the stations and the, the the bus stops as well. And, and Yeah, the... but still, $33,000 per month. Yeah, but the bus stops also cost uh, quite a bit of money. The maintenance but on but like how do you how much do you think like a city bus makes a month on one route like just one line one bus mm -hmm. i don't know either but that sounds like a lot to have each bus make like three hundred and thirty thousand swedish kroners per month yeah yeah i guess we've got 13 people waiting here so Let's take this omnibus and copy it. Brunks was named after a Swedish guy called Brunke. Huh. Unfortunate name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. It sounds a bit like something else. Yeah. What's up, Dorian? How you doing? Uh, 
All right, let's see here. Let's pump out two more, no, four more trucks. Gromgrad. Two more. And I should go. Tell me what the desired density of industry means when generating a map for the game. Uh, after I press the button next, in the next pop-up window, item appears, desired density of industry. Um, uh, so, industrial density is new for the spring update of Transport Fever 2. I think I, I have currently set it to medium. I haven't played around with it too much. But I think... Uh, the higher your industrial um, density, the easier it's going to be to find, uh, to like make lines. Because you're going to have, um, it, it, it tends to put industries that, that are, are connected closer together. So you're going to have farms closer to food processing plants and like, you know, oil wells closer to oil refineries. Uh, whereas if you have industrial density turned off, uh, then it's pretty much just going to be random uh, where your industries are located. And so you can have, you know, your oil wells on one side of the map and then your oil refineries are on the other side of the map. And then your fuel refineries are, are back at the beginning. Uh, so it's going to be kind of difficult at the very beginning of the game uh, to actually connect up industries. Because they can spawn really far away from each other, and you kind of have to get lucky to find something uh, that works early on. So in industrial density is, is I think, good for the early game. Um, some people might think that it, it makes it a bit too easy. You can keep the you can keep into low density. Um. Yeah. Well, it's about this. This transport stuff, Dorian. And I'm well. Uh, I just, I overslept today and I knew Isher would stream today. So I figured Isher doesn't stream very often. So we'll, yeah. we'll move our, we'll move over here for today. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at if I wanted to place this road over here with, uh, Rail. I like that opening in the mountain there. Yeah. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you. So I was looking at this oil well over here. And we could transport oil from here to there. That's fine. But this oil refinery is up a hill. It's not a large hill, but it's up a hill. Mm. Whereas, if we go over here, we have the oil well up on a hill, and it moves down. Which is preferable, because uh, when a train, or any vehicle really, has picked up uh, its cargo, it's going to be heavier. So if, we, if these two were switched around, and the oil well was down here, and the refinery was up here, I would not run... Uh, in, in 1856, I would not run a train line going up this steep hill carrying all that heavy oil or, mm. or petroleum up to the refinery. But here, because it's the other way around and we're actually moving down the hill when we're, we're full up on cargo, uh, it's actually going to help a us. A little hump there, though. Yeah, there's a bit, yeah, there's a bit of a hump. Mm. Uh, but we, we might be able to flatten that out. Um... Yeah. Little, 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 it's a little, little, little bit of a hump. Yeah. yeah, it would advise us to build a tunnel. Mm, mm. Yeah, it's quite a significant hump then. I, I just don't like when the canyons, like, I, like it needs to be, so I don't like it when it cuts through too much. Yeah. I'm like, that's that's gonna erode. That's gonna cause maintenance problems in the future. Yeah. You know, like it's a nightmare. You can build a short tunnel. Not too expensive. Yeah.
We've got this nice little path through the trees here, left by the road. Got it. You hold shift, by the way, when you're rotating, you... As small increments, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, socialists love public transport. Well, I think socialists would love, uh, should love mail to a similar degree and for a similar reason, not because it's cheap and an example of when the government does stuff, but because it's a great example of collective solution to a collective concern. Like just snail mail? Mm. I like packages and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, okay, there actually is a bit of a hill here. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I, I think most people, I mean, want to see, I mean, Sweden, like... Our privatized mail company in Sweden is like one of the most hated companies in all of Sweden. Yeah. Uh, because it's it, it ruined everything essentially. Yeah. Is this the new Vestlinken? I don't know Vestlinken. That's not regional to me. West Lincoln. Uh, West Lincoln is just a expansion of like infrastructure in Western Gothia. Hmm. Uh, there was a referendum about it for some reason. I don't know why they they decided that there was going to be a referendum about it. And people voted against it, and then the government said we're going to do it anyway. So it became like this big thing. Hmm. Uh, I mean, I think like technically the referendum was about if. They should, if the congestion tax should be increased in order to fund West Lincoln. I think that's what the referendum was about. I don't know. I don't think I was 18 at the time. I might have been, or maybe, no. I don't, no, I don't think so. Because I don't remember mm. voting. Um, I didn't vote. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't vote for this. <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't. Hmm. I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, like, I, I know Sweden, our our privatization of our kind of, like, mail was, uh, was a disaster. Uh, I know. I mean, usually when it comes to these things, right, like, this whole, like, myth about, like, uh, state-owned institutions being inefficient right like it's it's like it's manufactured right like it is it's like that because they made it inefficient uh, yeah. so that people would uh, would then be open to uh, uh, privatizing it right but you know really uh like the usps highly highly like was really good until they purposely uh made it inefficient by like putting ridiculous demands on it and stuff like that yeah uh i'm gonna give up on the oil well up there uh, yeah. i'm gonna build it down here instead and realized it was a lot more bumpy than i thought see it's like stuff my yeah it was pretty bumpy over there but I realize my pro-male stance will be less popular than the pro-mass transit stance because there are technologies to replace much of what male is traditionally. Uh, but until Star Trek transportation is mass transit, will still be uh, vital. Yes, Dorian is like, nobody writes letters anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, it's true. Yeah. But yeah. people send packages, things. Yeah. And no, of things course. from the internet. Yeah. But I think in the U.S. it was, uh, well, maybe it's, uh, well, I think it was during Bush, right? They, like, they forced uh, the USPS to, like, finance the 
retirement for people that are not even born yet that will work there in the future just essentially to put like a huge financial strain on mm. USPS. Yeah. That makes sense. 35 years in advance instead of the typical 30, I think. Yeah. What's up, Ashley? What's up, Beijing? Yeah. Being economical. Actually, I don't think this is very economical. It's actually not. The no. train depot is only 18,000. Yeah. We would actually it save is. money by just building a new one. See, they should change that. These depots should be more expensive because I like having to connect a lot yeah. of lines to one. I like when, like, the, the rail infrastructure kind of, like, connects in, like, ways and, you know, it's all just this big... Yeah. Big web. Hey, Ashlyn. Did I already say, hey, Ashlyn? Or did I just say, hey, Beijing? What's you've, the you've literally said it four times now. Hey, Ashlyn. No. <laughs> <laughs> but in 18, like, 50, had yeah. they discovered oil yet, or were they still, like, whale oiling it? Uh, no, there was oil. I find that like so wild that for a while like industrialization was like run on whale oil, right? Yeah. Like that to me is wild. Mm. Yeah. Whale oil and child labor. Yeah. Rubber from the Congo. Yeah. Extra virgin whale oil, yes. Yeah. We actually didn't even need to go up the hill. Oh, well, there you go. Oh, that's a nice... Yeah, that's, that's, what, oh, that's okay. what I was thinking, because you were looking at just that little hump there. I was like, you, that's not that yeah. far away. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, but I didn't say anything, so... This is all your fault. Yeah. 19 more people waiting. At our, our IC bus line. Boom. Another um, cool feature of the spring update, actually. I think it's cool anyway, or it's convenient at least. Is uh, you have multiple stops at a station. You can take... This is Norton Red... So let's just call this Old Asherville Central Station. Um... Oh, creative. Yeah. Uh, you can select right here. So right here you can select which stop you want uh, the mm -hmm. vehicle to use. But right here is the new thing where you can say uh, if you can't access Terminal 2, if there's already a vehicle there, you can go to Terminal 1 or Bus Station 1. That's fine. And you can do the same thing here. Say use either one. That's fine. Oh. So if you have a bunch of vehicles, uh, like you have, say you have one line uh, that are all like bunched up and like queuing, and then you have another oh. vehicle coming in, and it's also going to to the same bus stop, you can decide. You know what? I'm not gonna wait in line for that. I'm just gonna go to the other side, and then people can get on. Yeah, oh. that is neat. It is. Uh, it it a little bit glitchy uh or i i've had i've in one of my cities uh, sorry in one of my cities it, it like didn't really work super well with waypoints uh so if you have waypoints set up you like you want your vehicles to use very specific routes sometimes for some reason it seemed like um like it made an entirely new route to access mm. the alternative station um yeah. Because the AI is always trying to take the shortest route, unless you tell it explicitly tell it otherwise. Uh, so if you have a, uh, an alternative bus stop, and you have a waypoint before that alternate bus stop, the AI might decide, hey, if I'm going to this alternate bus stop, 
I'm just going to take the shortest route there possible, and then it's going to ignore your waypoint. Yeah. So I had to turn it off once for, for if, like, two or three of my lines. Um, but yeah. I've only had that problem once, and I, it might have just been, like, something weird about the city layout or something. What's up, Ben? Hi, Ben. And what's up, Jorlap? No, this is not Ishur's first. Ishur is quite the... The, the the transportation expert. Yeah. I know everything about transport. Yeah. Transport, trans people, trans rights. I know everything about it. Yeah. Transcontinental breakfasts. At the waypoint in the line? No, I I, I had. Uh and and uh, it used the waypoint. Um but for some reason whenever I asked it to uh to use alternate stations it decided that, okay, if I'm going to use this bus stop, then I'm going to follow the waypoint. But if I'm going to use that bus stop, then I want to go down and up and around. And, like, it went a really weird way for some reason. Maybe it had to do with, like, tram line or, like, tram tracks or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, one thing that's kind of fun... I think it's fun. Uh, and let me see. Uh, oh, the the tree making the tram. Yeah, the cargo tram. All right, I want to keep that there. Um. Uh, uh, okay, it's a little bit. It's gonna have to go all the way over here. I like the horse trams. The horse trams are cool. Yeah, I know. That's what I want to make. Mm -hmm. It is true, Ashley. By the way, another uh, little tip and trick is uh, if you say ownership to yes on only the first segment of the road leading out of the city. Then you can keep player ownership off for the rest of the of the track. Yeah, they won't do anything between it. Okay. Yeah. Well wow, cheating. Yeah, I know, right? I'm gonna save like five dollars on that maintenance. Yeah. Just gotta, gotta squeeze every penny. Boom. All right. I don't know why it has trees on here. Uh, oh, this is one of s no. Uh. Yeah. Whatever. Can't build one of these. Uh, is this is a a loop, apparently. But loop to loop. Yeah, it would have to be. Hey. The lights with the with the stop there. Yeah. Unfortunate. Uh, I guess. Disappointed. Put it down here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Mm. Why? Let me do it. And what's it colliding with? Oh, it's still colliding with the stop. Oh, that's so annoying. Yeah. Damn. Okay. Uh, I have to build like here. 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 
there's not okay. There's not okay. Come on. Okay, it's gonna cost me <laughs> this little money where it's gonna cost us three hundred thousand because we have to demolish houses to do it. But uh. that's a small price to pay for the aesthetic, I think. My god. Sorry, our houses have to be demolished. I mean, look at that. It's just so much nicer than just having the, the, the tracks like end abruptly in the street and then like the tram just like sh switches around. Oh. Oh god, this poor lady. Yeah. So sorry, Molly Stewart. <laughs> this is like... She need one of them like fainting couches. Yeah. Here's an odd drop some stuff there. Let's build a do -do 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 -do. Ram Depot. Now. Is this the most efficient way of doing this? No, not at all. But it is, I think, the coolest. For some reason these electric trams are unlocked from the from the beginning. Uh, they're from a mod. Uh, well, can't afford them anyway. And I don't have electricity, but... Who needs electricity? Yeah. And when you have cargo trams... <laughs> these guys can actually carry uh, 10 pieces of cargo opposed to these trucks which can only carry four each which means you need fewer trams and that actually means lower emissions yeah. uh, and saving a little bit money on maintenance though you do have to pay for the tram tracks if you I mean what the fuck no don't don't do that Hang on. Oh my god <laughs> There. Okay, now I own this bit of road. <laughs> I have to make it abundantly clear not to build on this. Oh, it's kind of interesting that trucks are using it as well. I mean... Why not? Yeah. Whatever floats their boat, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, 28 pieces of bread, 100 bread going to Gromgrad. We can we can direct you know all our all our trucks to go Gromgrad and then the cargo trams will take care of Asherville. No. Yep. These cargo trams can carry so much in one go. And then the I think the road all the way to Gromgrad is a bit too far to pull a, uh, a tram all the way. I wonder if there's an Elon Musk Hyperloop mod for this game. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> the, like, games like this is why you know, I want to like when I'm, when I'm like an old man. I want to have a, like a basement that I have like a model train set in, and that's yeah. what I want to spend my days doing. Yeah, exactly. that's the dream. Let's see. Uh, okay, all the trucks are gone. Let's just select. All our trucks and say you go to Gromgrad instead and uh, buy two more of these instead. This is so unnecessarily complicated and over-engineered, but yes. The trams almost look like it's like sleighs. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's pretty much where it is. Yeah, well, 
I mean, it doesn't like it's like like it would go in snow. Mm. Also, they look really fun to ride around on the on the back. They're just walking around. Yeah. Christmas trams. They're actually yeah. is a uh, a Christmas tram. I have a mod called Vienna Fever, which adds uh, streetcars from historical streetcars from Vienna. One of them actually is a Christmas themed streetcar. Nice. Yeah, Do you got any uh, USSR stuff? Uh, yeah. yeah. That's um, what I like about uh, like workers and uh, resources. The, there's so many people that have made like so many uh, different buildings from like the the socialist block. Yeah. Nice. Um, Gromgrad wants a uh, USSR flag too. Uh, I think I feel like you're paying too much attention to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling neglected. There we go. Oh, look at all this. 66 people waiting. <laughs> what was that you said about paying more attention to yeah. building <laughs> Grand Grand? You've got the whole population of Grand Grand. <laughs> Just uh, one bus stop. Everyone wants to take this one. Bus one. Yeah. yeah. It's like uh, the line outside the Apple store at a release of a new iPhone, but for just commuting. Yeah. All right, well, there we go. Yeah. Damn, check out that four horsepower train. <laughs> yeah. Horsepower actually is that one horsepower isn't equal to one horse. Um, I know. I always wondered that. Like, if they, like, estimated, like, the, the strength of a horse or something. No, it came from something... I forget what it was, but it's like a really old measurement of, of power. Uh, I th maybe it had something to do with horses to begin with. I don't know, but it, but it's it's weird because like one horse has has like two or three horsepower, I think, in reality. Like a moped. So it it really is like a uh, what's it called? Like how you call like hover moped. Like mm -hmm. uh, horses, yeah. And yeah, that won't make sense to anybody but Swedish people. <laughs> it came from a really strong person whose name was Horse. Mm. I I think I heard that it came from the fact that like automobile manufacturers wanted their cars to seem like, you know, they were the equivalent of this many horses, and that's why like they made the horsepower less like uh, weaker than one horse. But I don't know if that's true or not, or if it's just a conspiracy. Big marketing strikes again. Yeah. I think all of these See. people are wanting to go to... Uh... Go? Where do I go? Oh no, I want to go here. Yeah. It's just not Too that. Bad. You could walk here. <laughs> <laughs> this is not that far. I'm I on. would... I would take, I would I would take the the bus. I'm not gonna lie, I would yeah. take the bus. <laughs> uh, too bad we don't have a history teacher. There were no such things. Yeah, we have to settle for a geography teacher. Yeah, I don't know shit about history. <laughs> yeah, I really like um, decorating my cities as well. I think around like 1890s when I I always start. Putting down custom made buildings and stuff. Some like. Yeah. I don't have any mods. Like, I haven't seen any of these things. They're pretty cool. Yeah. Now yeah. you're just horsing around. You bet your partner. I think a lot of them I haven't unlocked yet. Like, generic industrial buildings and wind turbine for some reason in 1860. Why not? Uh, people assets you can just like have 
I'm like a person hovering ominously. And with the T-Bows. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ. And then you could kill them. <laughs> you got vending machines from Japan. Uh, again, in 1860. I think that's... It's good. Let's get a... Uh, Dido. If we can... Get some sweet snacks and drinks. Or I think Dido's yeah. just snacks. Or, or uh, drinks, I mean. Yeah. There you go. We're very uh, modern and progressive in 1860. Love, love our vending machines. Refrigerated electric vending machines in 1860. Yeah. You know, it runs on whale oil. <laughs> <laughs> it dispenses whale oil as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Refreshing. Carbonated whale oil. <laughs> Just, mm. I got this uh, oh, Rodina Mat uh, statue from Ukraine. It's pretty cool. Nice. Tokyo City Opera Tower. Wotus Rathaus. Jeez. Bolshoi Theater. Tokyo Sky Tree. And random ass signs for some reason. Playgrounds. Playgrounds. Like swing and cable car. Oh, what are these things? Oh, I love these. Oh, it's like, uh, what are they called? Zipline. Yeah. Seesaw. Climbing wall. Oh, oh that's cool. Hanging one. I don't even see the difference. You can put that on. Oh, look at this. Oh, it's so cute. We can put put a little little swing right here next to this tree in the in the bus station. Yeah. Oh, I don't think there are children in this game. No. But whatever. Children drive the trains. That's why you never see them. Oh damn. That's real. That's canon now. Flying fox. Where'd you say that? Tennis court. Tennis. You got a golf course? No. I used to play tennis when I was younger. I have a tractor. Nice. Um. Children power the vending machines, yes. Ooh. Wicked machines. Uh -huh. Again, very modern for 1860. Child oil, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you swipe your card in the ticket machine? Yeah. Got a Tory gate. Can uh, they drive through that? Oh, yeah. There's yeah, no collision. Uh, huh. It's not really made for driving through. It's like a, it's a gate that you put before a temple. It's it's to be like, within like beyond this Tory gate is like a spiritual place that's free of like bad spirits and stuff. Yeah, uh, not just, really something you would put above a bus station. But you, you know, just you just get rid of all the bad vibes at the end in the beginning of the journey, right? Like. Yeah. <laughs> Got rocks, that's important. And there's also um a kiosk. I like this. Ah it's cute. Very Kiosk Arabe. British. Table Trash Can Fountain. Or you can make like Sibyllus. Can sell some hot dogs, some Swedish meatballs. Yeah. Oh, I love these plastic garden chairs. The very generic white garden chairs that everyone has, but no one knows where they come Just from. Just randomly spread around town. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Let's put a little, let's put a little hot dog place over here. Now. Uh, right next to the Yugoslavian flag, <laughs> which is yep. there. And it's in, in German. This is the German speaking part of Yugoslavia. Yeah. I actually think there is a German speaking minority in Slovenia. Yeah. So Grongrad, Grongrad is canonically in Slovenia. Nice. Yeah, Gromgrad is a regular old melting pot. You know? Yeah. How's it going over here with the oil and stuff? We're making pretty good profit. And actually, start to pay back our $5 million loan. Small loan of $5 million. Yeah. I always dump. Like, if I have loans, I just immediately keep paying back. Because Rel's... You have to pay that interest rate. Yeah, but interest rate isn't too bad. Mm, it's only it fifty thousand. Uh, for five, yeah, it's like ten thousand for one million dollars. It's not too bad. Okay, money bags. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like in the grand scheme of things. Never even seen ten thousand dollars in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Well, have you ever seen a million dollars? No. Well, there you go. Uh, all right, we want fuel. Yeah, so we want to take this oil up here. If we could. I wonder if we can do this. It's this distance. Yeah. Right here. This works. Nice. Connect that up. Oh, by the way, tomorrow. Um, they they did a community challenge, so I'm gonna play a horror game tomorrow. Yeah, That'd be horrendous. <laughs> gonna make this station first a little bit longer. Then I have a little bit of a piece of track. I'll go straight there. The oil industry is really taking off. Who knew that oil was profitable? Yeah. Has anyone figured this out yet? No. I have this very convenient uh, track construction set. It contains this sister crossing. Which yeah. is, it's just so nice to be able to just oh, pop it down. That's cool. Yeah, so you don't have to build it every time. Yeah. It just goes shoop, shoop. I don't know, it's cheating. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, wait. Wait, that's wrong. God damn it. Yeah, it is. Uh, why would you not tell me? Uh, you just like you know, to watch me suffer. Yeah, I'm not a backseat gamer. I'm just, <laughs> you know, watch the chaos unfold. Like how you build a whole railroad incorrect, so you have to tear it all down. Yeah. What a prank, bro. <laughs> Too close. No, it's gonna work. Look, I can do it this way. Oh, damn. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. 
But in C. And oh. Grom is secretly evil. I think I've made it very publicly. Uh, like, I haven't kept it a secret. No, that's true. This one going this way, and then we just bring over here, although. If I want to future proof it, I should make it longer. Man, I hate thinking about the future and long term sustainability. Yeah. So annoying as a as an industrialist. Yeah, I just want to have the cash start rolling in. That's all I care about. Yeah. We watched a video on Fordlandia uh, yesterday on stream. Mm. It's like Henry Ford made a company town in Brazil to make rubber. Yeah, and it was absolute disaster. And it's like the, this like cringe thing of like billionaires like trying to make a legacy and like you know like he made this company town and started like oh no everybody has to be vegetarian. You can't play soccer. You have to do like line dancing and like yeah. you know. Well, vegetarianism is pretty cringe. Well, like, you know, having Henry Ford come there and telling, like, the Brazilian workers, no more meat for you. You, ha you get rice and vegetables, and that's what you get to eat. <laughs> yeah. Because I said so. Yeah. Now we watched a video on it yesterday. It was, it was interesting, and 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 this thing came up about like because there was like riots, right? You know how they always say like, oh, the they had to send the army in to calm them down, or like you had to send the police in to calm them down. Yeah, and it's like, you know, like this image of the military going. It's like they're there. Come on, <laughs> why are you destroying things? <laughs> Stop <Yeah>. it. <laughs> Yeah, no women, no booze, no porn as well. Well, sounds like Islam, am I right? Yeah. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. I heard in the Maldives they don't have laws about wearing seatbelts because no one drinks alcohol. So there are no accidents. That's that's you also don't have any highways i've been in an accident while i was sober in a parking lot so <laughs> <laughs> in the kind of accident where you needed a seatbelt uh i mean you know like even 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 like a little bump at like, like relatively like low 70 speed 70 miles an hour in a parking lot yes yes <laughs> i just I no like I they they turned like they made a really wide turn in a parking lot during rain and dark and I like kept driving and then they came out in front of me, so mm -hmm. I just drove straight through their car in seventy miles. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like it still has like a bump, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, yeah.
Oh, hey, we got a new train. The Borsig. Green. Can't afford it anyway. Can I pop on? Yeah. Absolutely. No, actually, you can't, okay? <laughs> There we go. We got a little bit of oil. Nice. Very nice. Oh, it just has one. <laughs> well, that's all I could afford. <laughs> that person is like, yes, I am a very important part of... <laughs> yeah. Technically, it's carrying more than one truck. And it's faster than one truck, though. So. Yeah. Still superior. But it costs money, more money than a truck. No. Well, the faster you can make deliveries, the more money you get paid. Yeah, I know, but the train still costs quite a lot. No, look, we're gonna make like a million dollars from this delivery. No, you're gonna make like seven thousand. Uh, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, we just picked picked up. Oh, sorry. No, <laughs> okay, no, no, we'll see. Sorry, uh, but four four thousand. Yeah, no, four thousand. I'm guessing. Oh, now you skewed the. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. 8,000. No, it's going to be more than that. It's going to be... Probably... Like three, 300,000 divided by 6. 45, 45k or something like that, I think. Let's see. 27,000. Yeah, close enough. <laughs> Not at all. Eh, technically there was a profit. Okay, not anymore. No, okay, never mind. Yeah, <laughs> this, there was a profit for a few minutes. It's eh. like... <laughs> a short second there was profit. Yeah, it's like when you just get your paycheck and then immediately all the bills come. It's like, you're like, yay, I'm rich. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we made our first fuel delivery. Yeah. Or oil delivery. Ching. Nice. And, uh, build a truck, truck stopu. Turaku stopu. Nice. That's how you say it in Japanese. Yep. Actually, I don't know if that's true, but no Japanese, it could be. Wasn't it someone that said that, like, if you don't know, it is actually helpful to speak like that? Or yeah. is that just a myth? No, no, it absolutely is. Um, just because of the way that the Japanese language works and how it's like a, a syllabary. Mm. If you think in, like, syllables, like two, two letters, like consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel. Um uh and and like you make like that like stereotypical japanese accent it can genuinely help native japanese speakers understand what you're saying more easily like if instead of saying hotel can you take me to my hotel yeah. uh you say hotel uh, the the japanese l and r is, is a bit tricky because it's like it's somewhere between an l and an r it's not I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, it 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 just sounds like you're being racist. Yeah. <laughs> like... <laughs> Same thing in Korean. Yeah. 
I mean, we kind of do it in Swedish as well. Um, like when you're speaking to a Swedish person and you're saying a word that is in English, we say it with a Swedish pronunciation a lot of the time. Well, there's a lot of like, uh, you, you know, like the, the people who, who like they know English, but they don't have the vocabulary. And like they'll speak, yeah. and it's hilarious. And then they'll they'll just be like, you know, you know, uh, you know, uh, Lisk, you yeah. know, Lisk, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> like, who doesn't know what Lisk is? Yeah. Or I don't understand you. I don't know what Lisk is. <laughs> Lisk. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that video with that, like the the Sweden Democrat, uh, that's like being interviewed, and then talking about like why he doesn't think immigrants <laughs> should come to Sweden, and he's like, yeah, it's like no, I don't think so. They're not, uh, you know, like talk about how they're not smart. It's like the worst, and I'm just mixing Swedish words yeah. no, like that. It's like they don't even know how to talk proper English. Yeah, no, that was actually way better than, than what he was doing. Yeah. I used to do a little bit of that when I, because uh, I'm really bad at French too. I'm bad at all languages, even English. Um, but to, to say things like properly in French, when I was pronouncing names, I would use like a French accent. Yeah. It worked. Yeah, yeah, yeah it does. You would just before, like uh, after you said something, you would go home. <laughs> yeah, so the traffic reports would be like, uh, "Say Laurent, ha ha." Yeah, mm -hmm. and they were like, "I did not understand you until the ha." <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, one of my favorite stories uh, about um, about Japanese and loan words is how uh, Aaron Hansen told it. He said uh, he went to a cafe and he wanted milk tea. And so yeah. he ordered uh, Guryu Chai, which is the literal word for milk and the literal word for tea. Yeah. Uh, but the cashier did, or the waitress didn't understand what he was saying. And so event he showed like a picture or something, and so she was like, "Oh, you mean miruku tea?" <laughs> like fucking. I couldn't figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, generally, if you're struggling as a tourist in Japan, just speak with a racist Japanese accent. Yeah. Well, there's like a whole song, um, and it, and it, they wrote it like because. They thought that, you know, the Tokyo Olympics were were going to happen in 2020. So it was like just before. And the song is essentially like, hey, here's to speak, you know, Japanese English and, you know, find out how to get Starbucks and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think Starbucks is like Starbucks a Sue. <laughs> I... Never thought about how to pronounce Starbucks in Japanese. What is it? Starbucks? Yeah. Starbucks? Yeah, I think it's like something like that. And then McDonald's is like Maka. Maka. Oh. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Kind of like Maka Donkin. Mm hmm. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, we, we call it Donkin. Yeah. Which I wonder where that comes from. Yeah, well, in Tennessee, everybody called it uh, McD's. Yeah. Uncle Vanya, I love Uncle Vanya. Yeah, Uncle Vanya is is the. It's the real. Yeah. MVP. Oh, French is absolutely not my first language. <laughs> my first language is English, and uh, again, I'm still terrible at it. Wait, English? I thought you were Canadian. 
I used to speak French as a child, but, you know, that brings up emotional scars because my French babysitter was, like, not nice. <laughs> so I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It doesn't actually. But, like, um, yeah, no, I used to speak, like, fluent French as a child. Yeah. But my parents do not speak French, so. Parents lost could afford a babysitter. That's pretty bougie. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> well, they were in the military at the time, so. I was like your mom military. was in the military too. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was only your dad. No, women they like met on a fight. base and stuff. Yeah, like <laughs> women, not in my military. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. No, yeah, my mom was like a finance clerk, um, and, and she was in for for years. That's like how my parents met, right? That so. is still cooler than what my dad did when he did like his conscripted sir my dad was a bus driver in the military <laughs> which was like because like you know in, in sweden like they brought it back like the the thing we had like mandatory like military service right um for or training essentially it's not service it's training uh but like during uh so 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 everybody's parents like for for my generation like everybody had essentially uh their dads had all like done done the military training so everybody was like oh what did your dad do in the military and i was like yeah my dad was a bus driver and then like my friend was like yeah my dad was an attack diver mm. i'm like just fuck you and <laughs> <laughs> it's like when i talk about my dad's career in the military it's especially after reading like the history and stuff i'm just like oh god it's so cringe because he used to drive tanks over in oh. Germany, and they used to like drive them around the you know West German countryside like a bunch of fucking assholes. <laughs> like that was that was their job, right? And then, mm. um, and then he went on to become, um, infantry. Right? He didn't get deployed anywhere, a and then he went MP. <laughs> so he was a cop. <laughs> so I'm like, ooh. Um... Oof. Nice. What yeah. did uh, what did your dad do in Lumpen? He was a medic and a truck driver. I think still cooler than he mine. drove a truck as a medic. Yeah, no, that's still cooler than mine. Yeah, or ambulance driver, I guess. I mean, the ambulance was just a truck. But yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, Chairman Meow, what did uh, what did your dad do in Lumpen? Fucking. Killed Russians, that's what he did. Wasn't that war or anything, he just kind of went, you know, AWOL. Just like, I, 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 I just want to find someone with, like, a lamer uh, military training than my dad. Because bus drivers, like, come on. Yeah. He's just like, yeah. And his brother, his older brother was a truck driver, which is, like, just slightly better. Mm-hmm. What what would you do like what would you think is like lamer than a bus driver? I don't know. I mean I don't know all the kind of like jobs you can have. Or driver. Like horse trainer? I like that's horses. Not, yeah, no, what like that's that's cool. I mean I had uh uh I used to go to school with a guy that that like he did lumpen like the military training, but then also because after you do lumpen, if you have good grades and stuff like that, you can get hired by the military, right? And he he was like his family had always been really musical, so they played a lot of instruments. So he joined uh, the um, the the military orchestra, right? Uh, so he did like the honor guard at the at the mm -hmm. palace and stuff like that. And they rode on horses and played like trumpet and stuff like that. And that is cooler than being a bus driver, I'd say. I mean, I know a lot because I used to work at like a few, we call them reserve units here, right? Mm -hmm. And like half of the people were who worked there were usually musicians that like, you know, went to parades and shit. Because um, you can't be like a full-time um 
like musician in the military. It's just, you know, not a thing. Um, mm-hmm. And then the job that I always wanted, but uh, it, when you say you want this job, they're like, everybody wants that fucking job. You're never going to get it. And that is uh photo tech. Mm-hmm. Like that was my dream military job when I joined the service. And like, I wanted to remaster to that. What is photo service? It's like um, going to, you know, special events and being able to, like, travel and take photos of, like, military parades or, mm. um, like, honor guards and, like, shit like that. You know, it, it's press, essentially. Taking um, photographs of all the war crimes. Pretty much. <laughs> you know, as I, you do. I think that's the one thing you don't take the photographs of. Oh, well, yeah. You have to make sure yeah, not yeah, to yeah. get the war crimes in the background, so... Yeah. They should tell the soldiers in Vietnam to that they, they fucked up in that department. Listen, sometimes it's hard. It's just that it's all over the place, and you're like, mm. "Ooh, fuck." A coffee getter. I mean, coffee get. I don't think anybody's really a coffee. But like, even like, if you were like a a, a cook in the military, that's still cooler than a bus driver, in my opinion. I like buses and all that stuff. It's just like when when you're a kid and you're like you're you're doing the whole dad brag, right? As as children tend to do, right? Like my dad's stronger than your dad. But then it's like, oh what military service did your dad do? Bus driver is pretty low on that when especially when you have someone who's literally like, you yeah, know, my dad was an attack driver, which is like uh, attack driver. <laughs> attack diver. <laughs> My dad tried to do airborne, but I guess during when he was like trying to, you know, get in um, while parachuting, he ended up like breaking his leg and landing in the middle of a fucking highway. Nice. Well, not nice. I'm sorry that your dad broke your leg, but. Yeah, whatever. Not broke my leg, but. Oh, bro, yeah, I mean, sorry. sucks to be him, I guess. I'm sorry your dad broke your leg. <laughs> yeah, that'd be. That's pretty intense. <laughs> yeah, that's actually what happened, you know. I wasn't born yet, but you know. Oh damn, Grom grads getting a really fancy train station. Yeah. Nice. Building, small main building. My grandfather was still some vates um. What is that? Is that like that's an old term for a conscientious subjector? Maybe. Oh. Like literally it translates to like conscious cell sensitive. Like yeah. Sensitive consciousness. Yeah. Your grandfather, he's, uh, he's a little sensitive. Yeah, he's too sensitive <laughs> to kill people yeah. and hold guns. Yeah, something like that. So the, see, that is cooler. Just the fact that he was a conscientious objector is still cooler than being a bus driver in the military. I don't know. Well, buses are nice. I mean, buses are nice, but like, you know. Yeah, but what kind of buses did he drive? Like, <sighs> was he driving like, you know, different troops around the place? I, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't ask too much about it. You don't because know because like... I was I was just like your bus driver. Yeah, don't tell me anything more. It's pretty late. I don't. <laughs> oh, wow. That. Wow. <laughs> pretty rude. The disrespect. <laughs> Dad's gonna share his like, you know, his his lumpen story. So I'm like, you were a bus driver. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> You've ruined my life. <laughs> I'm gonna be bullied so much for this, Dad. You don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> Selfish. <laughs> but he was. I mean, he did work as a bus driver. Did you ever like, think about was... lying? I mean, he was uh, when when he met my mom. He was a taxi driver, and uh, and then later he drove a bus and taxi. So like, that's what he. That's what he did, right? Yeah. 
And just saying that, like, you could have, you could have lied about his job, right? And been like, yeah, he was like, you know, this really cool job. There and like, what they agent. were they gonna find? Were they gonna find out? Like the kids at school? What? No. That he, yeah. That he actually drove a bus? Like you could have been like, yeah, he drove like really important governors and you know all these like important people Still around the place. Lame. Yeah, no. <laughs> Actually, yeah. that's but, but what like, my dad that... used to do for a bit. He drove yeah, the bus no. the night Olaf Palmer was murdered. Yeah. <laughs> it was him. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah, it's like pretty much... Um, one of the reasons why my dad didn't go to military jail um, was pretty much because... Um, he was going over to Germany. Mm. Pretty like most of my dad's military stories when he was younger is all he was drinking a lot. Yeah. yeah. Just tell them he's in a set in, on an undercut. Yeah. I mean, no, I don't like that. Like, I'm I'm past the whole thing of having to brag about my dad. Like, yeah, I should have <laughs> thought about that. I I once. Um, uh, that reminds me about just just like making up story lying essentially there was a you know like how how kids have like birthday parties right like you're aware of this phenomenon no, right no, <laughs> what is no that? but someone someone had like a masquerade party for their birthday mm. Wait, what? and uh when i was a kid a masquerade yeah masquerade masquerade oh like i was cost, gonna yeah. say it was a costume like, party like a... costume party right <laughs> oh shit and and I had like this this, this <laughs> I was like seven, right? And they wanted me to like um uh I was gonna dress up as like a pirate. And as a pirate, I had like a completely different visit vision of what a pirate is than like my parents, which I feel like now looking back at it, my parents were probably more correct, but like they tried to make me wear like um like a blouse that was very feminine and I wouldn't have it. Right. Mm -hmm. Again, I was seven. Right. Uh, so I ended up not uh, going in normal clothes. Right. And then people asked what I was. And I just said, I'm a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> Cause like they would, they would wear normal clothes. And uh -huh. then they had, uh, <laughs> and like, uh, That's... they had, a. Uh, 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 like seven-year-old behavior. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, well, I could have been ten or something like that. It was young. It was it's like preteen, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and they had a they had like the other kids get to vote. Like there was a costume contest, and I won the costume contest. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's beautiful. <laughs> There was especially one kid that was very fascinated by the fact that it was like, yeah, that's really good. <laughs> I just wore wow, normal you're, clothes. <laughs> you're wearing normal clothes. <gasps> so clever. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, like, I subverted everyone's expectations and just like... <laughs> mm -hmm. Pretty sure there's a, uh, a gag in the office where Jim Halpert Goes to a costume party as I think a guy who lost his costume or something on his way to a costume party. Yeah. So yeah, is that that's an alternative as well? Yeah. So yeah, you got you got plenty of options. I mean, really, that's kind of brilliant in a weird way. <laughs> but yeah, that's funny. I don't know. I think I just like I, I didn't like the cost I was given, but I still wanted to like participate or like I felt embarrassed that I showed up in no costume or something. I think. Yeah. And and it was just like, you yeah, know, I I'm actually dressed up. You guys don't know it. <laughs> Hidden in plain sight. Yeah. Damn. I wanna shorten this road but i can't cut it into segments i would have to tear down this building that's annoying it's too uh, expensive 
Yeah. Do this and. Yeah, there was one where it was a three hole punch. Yeah. With the little oh, dots on yeah. it. Three hole punch. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that looks nice. See, yeah. I didn't have any mods for mine, so like. Yeah, that's why I, I like the since like also workers and resources so many mods like I really like decorating in that in yeah. that game. What um, what would you say Azure was the best costume that you ever like had for a party? I haven't gone to many costume parties. Um... See, we don't have Halloween, right? So, like, yeah. well, yeah, yeah. That's what. That's why I was like trying to like <laughs> delicately ask, because you know the the city or not the city, the country is a bit different than North America. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm I, I'm sure I've gone as a pirate as a kid. Um, I don't know. I feel like I remember like birthday parties and stuff. Some yeah, some people sometimes dressed up, but it was mostly about like bringing your coolest toy and like showing mm -hmm. it off. Like those Hulk, you know, those like Hulk gloves that make sound when you punch. Oh, that's that's after like, my time. Yeah, well, they were uh, the newest technology at the time, and uh, they were very cool. I didn't have them, of course, but I had a friend named Martin who had them. The coolest toy. I think I, I I had a few really cool toys. I had, uh, uh, you know, Darkwing Ducks, uh, like shit, like flying, like aircraft. Yeah. I had that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had, uh, uh, you know, you know that show, the puppet show, the the Thunderbirds. Mm-hmm. With the like, is everybody familiar? It's like an old puppet show with like. It's like these people live in a mountain. They have like different ships. I had that mountain and the ships. I have my birthday one year. Thunderbirds. Cool. Hey, anybody remember the the Thunderbirds? Yeah. They Thunderbird used to one Thunderbird two. Not Thunderbird two was like a big green like ship, and then Thunderbird one was like this red rocket. And I think that. Um... That show used to play after I watched Inuasha every week. The green was four. Okay. Yeah. Red was... Th I thought red was one. Yeah. I used to watch, like, um, <clears throat> a TV show called uh, Muppet Babies. And it was, mm. you know, as it sounds... Um, that and there was like I think Rugrats. I liked that one and yeah. a few other ones. Very Nickelodeon. Yeah. I'm trying to think of like the toy that was probably like my favorite. I don't know. I was kind of spoiled. So. I had, um, you know, uh, you know, Luftensielta. I had the yellow airplane as well. Don't 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 I got one time No, it's okay. When I was a kid, uh there so my parents weren't like, you know, super well off, but like sometimes they would take us to Toys R Us and we get like they'd be like, Okay, you can get one toy and I'm like, Okay, cool. Right. Mm. And I think I picked the Sailor Moon castle that had Sailor Moon and Tuxedo Mask. Right. Mm. Um, but for well, like whatever reason, I think my brother got two toys and I only got the one because it was like more expensive uh, until my mom was like, <laughs> and this is the thing, like my mom's. Uh, I'm pretty sure my mom was going through a manic episode because she took me to, to the Barbie aisle and she like took out two Barbies and she's like, do you want this one or this one? And I got to like choose and I think I picked the veterinarian Barbie 
And uh, she's like, okay, you're getting two toys. And I was just <laughs> like, wow, this is amazing. But it's really like a very distinct memory where I'm like, oh, yeah, my mom was going through some shit. Yeah. You know, she was on that manic high. Um, worked out in my favor, I guess. So, but um, yeah. but yeah, no, uh, I had like I had a lot of Sailor Moon stuff, um, which has not changed, obviously. <laughs> but um, and then uh, yeah, a lot of Barbies. Mm. Um, I was very very girly mm. as a child. Hearing oh. someone I see is young is my time as well. Well, I mean, time moves fast, right? And I'm, I'm turning 35. Time is I'm moving fast, and I'm Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I mean, also had uh, the, the Batmobile, by the way. Oh, damn. Yeah. I, I, think, I feel like I most of my toys, at least when I was younger, were uh, hand-me-downs from my sisters. Mm. I we I got nice things. Uh, we didn't have like I mean to today. I mean my of course, right? Like we didn't have a lot of money. We were comfortable. Of course, my my parents were able to buy a house pr pretty young and stuff like that, right? So it's not like we were poor, right? But like I only I never really got toys just like, you know, because like, you know, you go to the store and it's like, can I have this and stuff? And never, never, ever, right? It was just solely like birthdays and Christmas that I got all my stuff. Yeah. Uh, no other like occasion and, and stuff like that. Um, very rarely. Um, it was very weird growing up. Uh, I don't know if you can relate to this, Grom, but it was, to me it was very strange growing up in Sweden, but having, like, all of our cartoons and media were from the U.S. So, like, all of the stuff, like, you know, school, like, like every show on, like, Nickelodeon or, or Disney or whatever, it's, like, about kids taking place in school was about American kids and it took place in American schools and it's so much of it it's just like can't relate to it at all um, and for the longest time there were like things that I saw in like American cartoons that I thought were fictional until mm. I learned that no they're actually real like yellow school buses mm. I thought that was just like a TV thing I didn't realize that there were actually yellow school buses in the US yeah or like cafeteria food being disgusting i thought that was just like a tv trope stuff like that well, yeah and and the whole thing of like when the bell rings it's like yeah. class is like done and everybody just starts running that, that's not like the teacher tells you when the class is over like there was not like a like oh mm. it's it's done and everybody just starts packing up right like that's yeah. not a thing in sweden but but also right i i don't know because like Obviously, I'm a bit older, and we I didn't I didn't grow up with like, uh, like I we didn't get like cable or any of the shows like Cartoon Network or anything like that until I was in my like teens, right? So mm -hmm. I only had three channels. I had channel SVT one, SVT two, and TV four, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of the shows there, I mean, you had like certain things but then there was not just from america but just a bunch of different from like different european countries as well like put into swedish mm. so i i'm not i didn't grow up with like the cartoon network nickelodeon shows and stuff like that yeah i think the weirdest so my um so every christmas right my it was either like my great aunt or like my grandma or something uh, would always get me like certain things. Um, and it, my brother would always get a Beano, which was like this British comic book. Right. And we actually have a few still downstairs. So we would always get that. And then because I was a, I was the girl, I always got, I believe it was called a Bunty. And it was like, 
the it was like a teen preteen magazine that came in like a hardcover and I never understood what the fuck was going on when I was reading it because they would have like Scottish jokes or English jokes or something yeah. in it and I'd be like this is almost in like another fucking language yeah <laughs> where like the Beano made more sense because it was you know Dennis the Menace and Mindy, you know, the whatever, like, and, and there was like a dog and it was like these amazing comics that I thought were absolutely hilarious. But the thing that I always found with those comics were like, the kids were really shit. Like they were like the worst people ever. And they were so, it, it, it was almost like malicious in a weird way. Like, which I found very different from growing up in like North America or seeing like American things where it was like, you know, kids got up to high drinks and, you know, like playful stuff. But like these kids in the British Dennis and Menace ones were like, like, you know, almost killing their parents and shit. Like it was <laughs> wild. <laughs> yeah. Also with the train stations, if they're going between our cities, yeah. shouldn't it be one USSR flag and one Yugoslavian flag instead of two USSR ones? Oh, no, I just put down the red flag. The oh, red pattern. Okay. Yeah. Blood said, I grew up in a country, uh, grew up country enough that my favorite toy was sneaking out some WD-40 to spray on tomato steaks so we could set them on fire before beating each other with them in sword fights. Those are good memories. Yeah. <laughs> like, did... Okay. I had... When I was a kid, that, like, made my dad so angry. I like cutting, like, things like, uh, like furniture and stuff like that to see what was inside the furniture uh -huh. and stuff. <laughs> it's like, he... My dad had, like, one of those, like, when we got a computer, right? He had one of those ergonomic things with, like, the... It was like a gel pad. For, but in front of the keyboard and I was like so curious what was in there so I tried to be sneaky about it and made like a little incision at the very side of it to look inside and it wasn't that sneaky like my dad noticed right away that I'd cut open his like ergonomic gel thing <laughs> but yeah yeah I mean it's natural to be curious as a kid yeah God, I just downloaded, like, viruses onto the computers. That was the thing that, like, pissed off my parents. That and breaking uh, CD players. I probably went through mm. a dozen CD players. Uh, so much so that, like, <laughs> one accidentally got run over by a bus. Oh. Huh. Yeah, because I'd be, like, listening to music on the way, you know, anywhere. And I would... I was a very clumsy teenager right very awkward um so i'd always drop my cd player um you know whether it was like in my pocket or on me right and this was like when cd players were like kind of, like they were fucking huge right well yeah so, you gotta fit a cd in it so. well i know i know it's just like you you look back at them now and you're just like jesus christ they're fucking massive right so um and I don't know how I did it, but I was running for the bus and I missed the bus. And as a result, I accidentally dropped my CD player um, while it was dropping. I kicked it and then it went into the road and then the bus crushed it. Nice. It was comical. <laughs> uh, yeah, I saw books, very quickly. Uh, I put books in the microwave ones. <laughs> Damn. Don't know why I did that. Was it a geography book? No, it was cookbooks. Oh. <laughs> I don't remember doing it. I've just been told by uh, my sister and my, my parents that I did it. What's up, Kay? Oh, yeah, I saw you earlier. Yeah. What's up, Kay? 
Okay. Uh, yeah, th- yeah, I was taught very quickly not to ask for shit in stores. My parents would avoid making a scene in public if I or my sibling acted up. But once we got to the car, I, I and or my siblings got a talking to. Yeah. Mm. No, I mean, I asked for some things, right? It's just... I, I, it was just, you yeah, know, it was like, if it was my birthday, and then... I I didn't really get like um uh like any like allowance for a long time. Um like mm. you know how some kids they get an allowance whether it being like, you know, it, for me like when I was a kid it started out being like like $2 like a week, but even that like my parents just forgot most of the time so it wasn't really regular. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't really have an allowance until, like, um, because a common thing when you become a teenager in Sweden, because, like, your parents get money for you as long as you're, until you're 18, and as long as you're in school, uh, uh, from, from the government, which is around, like, a little bit more than $100, right? And what some parents do is when you become like a teenager they end up giving that as the allowance to the kids and that's like the first time i really had like an allowance so to speak yeah i mean i remember getting an allowance here and there but i usually that was like when i didn't have a job but when i had a job i didn't get an allowance no, um, it's like kids, kids that don't work. Like, it's it's one of the reasons why. I mean, you they that I mean, you get the the money, spending money and stuff like that. But like, you you're not supposed to work. You're supposed to go oh, to yeah. school. Well, yeah. I mean, this was like when I was you know fifteen to eighteen. Yeah, I'd have like a part time job at McDonald's um, or Tim Hortons. So. Yeah. Which is the most Canadian thing ever, <laughs> but like, like the thing that like I find when I was in lived in the United States, the reason a lot of like essentially kids have to get jobs and stuff when they're like teenagers is is because they have a car, <laughs> right? Like, you know, and that's just not something in Sweden, right? Like, you don't get your car until you're like eighteen. Yeah. Some people had mopeds, but that, like, mopeds don't take a lot of gas, so you don't need a lot of gas money, because the they don't they don't consume a lot. Or I wanted a moped so bad when I was a teenager. The problem is that like, um, where I lived was like not a very walkable city, like at all. So, and when you grow up in the suburbs, like, you can't, like, a moped is almost, like, fucking useless, right? I mean, it's, I think it's less, mopeds are, like, less popular now than it was when I was a kid, because now you have, like, these electric scooters and stuff, and a lot of the kids, they, like, get computers and stuff instead now. Mm. Um... But yeah, most, most like especially the boys. There's some some girls too, but like the boys were like, you know, oh yeah, you. T- I think it's like 15, right? It's like, oh, you gotta get them open. Yeah. I had three mopeds. I got one before I was 15. Um, I got like an old, like a Puk, uh, Puk Montana. It was, a, it was a really old moped, but that one broke essentially right before it was. Uh, I was allowed to drive it on the roads because we were driving it on like small back roads and stuff like that. Yeah. So then uh, I got like a, like a dirt bike looking one, a Yamaha. Mm. Nice. Yeah, it was. It's used. Like I used moped, we didn't get like I had one friend because his dad was like quite loaded he got like a brand new but we all had like you know just really old mopeds was it like a a moped group of people 
Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, just, just that was that, that, that was freedom, like... right? That was freedom. And then, like, you know, <laughs> like, it's like, because, yeah, you don't get a car. And, like, teenagers don't get cars and stuff like that. So, like, mopeds is, like, that first kind of, like, freedom, right? But mm-hmm. also, of course, uh, we have public transport, right? So it wasn't like we couldn't get anywhere with bicycles and buses, trains, right? So you can get anywhere without a car. Did you have I mean, a moped? That's fair. Sure. No, I never did. I've never had a car or a moped. I always nope. lived in big cities with good public transport, so I haven't, uh, haven't needed it. Didn't even bother getting a driver's license, driving license. I've had a few bicycles over the years, though. Yeah, I don't have a driver's license. I do, I like the driving. I thought it was a lot of, like, I drove in the United States, and I really enjoyed driving. I thought it was a lot of fun, and I was like, I wouldn't mind having a job where I were, like, driving around all day. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, like, I didn't get my license until I was 23, and that's because, like, where I was living in, um, like, we we had lived in the suburbs, and then when I grew, when I was, like, a teenager, we lived kind of closer to, um, the city, so there, like, we lived right on a bus route, and that bus took you directly downtown, so it was, like, you know, I didn't, I didn't need a car. I could go anywhere uh, if it was like walking distance or like whatever. Right. So um, yeah, I straight up like just did not drive until I was 23. And I was like, "Mm, I better fucking learn, I guess. So I still have my first car though. Like, and I mean, it's 11 years old and she still runs good. I'm going to run it to the ground though, because I am broke yeah yeah the day i need another car i'm i'm probably gonna get like my mom's and <laughs> she'll get a new get car a, get a tesla like <laughs> aoc yeah, right. oh yeah that's that's what i need AOC is AOC said she's she's gonna switch cars now because Elon Musk is turned reactionary. Wait, she got a fucking Tesla. She yeah, she has a Tesla and she like made a tweet about how she's gonna get rid of her Tesla and get another car because Elon Musk is a bad person. Yeah, I mean he's <laughs> been a bad person for a long time. I, I, I know, right? But like come on, like you can't expect too much of these people. Yeah. I, you know what? The thing is, like, I don't keep up with, like, these quote-unquote progressives because I just, I just don't care. <laughs> it, it's just, I know. I, I'm just so annoyed with, like, American politics because it's, like, it's really just the same shit and then people, you know, talking out of their ass. Yeah, but, you know, you do keep up with the progressives in your own country, like Jagmeet Singh. I mean, Jagmeet Singh is like the I AOC of Canada. I'm well aware and I don't keep up with that. I I'm, I don't even, listen, that was, that was almost a year ago. Wow, when are you gonna let it go? Never, 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 okay. <laughs> okay, I was a sock dam once and I regret it. Okay, I immediately got sick afterwards, and I've been sick since. So isn't that my penance? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wasn't a so- I, like sock them thing. It's just because like, uh, I mean, did did you start out uh, like? Did you get political? Like, uh, when when did you even get political? Uh, sure, like around like what age? Like 15, 14. And, and was that like, just because I know your family is like very involved with like the social Democrats, was that through that? Because that's what, what, what my thing, of course, right? Because my family was also, or my mom's side was very involved with the social Democrats. So it was always like, 
you know, through that, that was like where it started. Yeah, no, I, I actually, I think um, the first time I became like conscious of politics, I think was when I was like 11 or 12. Um, and uh, I was on Tumblr. Mm. And I was exposed because I, I was born in like a very small like rural village um you know growing up with a lot of backward ideas about like race and homosexuality and stuff mm. um so like my first exposure to like progressive politics was tumblr um mm. i just like you know lgbt uh you know rights and stuff and like legalization of of gay marriage in the u.s and like the, the westboro baptist church and stuff mm. like that uh, and then uh, yeah i moved to to gothenburg and became even more exposed to like non-white straight people uh because gothenburg is a diverse city even if it's uh, very economically or like it has a lot of like racial segregation based on on you know financial and economic segregation. Yeah. Uh, but it's still a diverse city. Um, yeah. And so I you know I came aware of like injustices and and, and racism and, and stuff here. Uh, and then I joined the Communist Youth League because they were like around and doing stuff. Yeah. Um, and I saw like their posters and, and, and things like that and I went on their website. I saw it was free to join uh, or like your first one or two months you like you don't have to pay a membership fees. I was like, well, I can join them and like see what happens, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I did. And then I read like Lenin and Stalin and stuff. Nice. Handed out flyers. <laughs> <laughs> that people immediately crumpled up. Uh, the well, is, I mean, uh, people would like take them and then throw them in the trash when you're not looking. Yeah, yeah. No, Swedish people are just, they would not do anything as, as confrontational as that in front of you. <laughs> they just do it around the corner. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. A lot of, uh, I was, um, Communists moved to Göteborg because that's where, like, yeah, that's where all the communists like gather, yeah, <laughs> like concentrate in in Gothenburg. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like an old uh, harbor town. A lot of industrial workers and a his history of like striking and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, my own story is a fucking roller coaster. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, well, my dad's always been really conservative, right? And I, I remember being younger and, like, I would say it was, like, I, I, was, I was pretty, like, left-leaning when I was younger and a, like, teenager. Because I knew that, like, the war in uh, Iraq was bad and, like, all the shit around there, right? And I hated George Bush and, like, all that shit. But my dad really made it about, like, well, when you get older, you'll get more conservative, right? Yeah. Um, he was only partially right. But then, so I was very interested in, pol like, politics then. And then before I joined the military was the recession. Like just before I joined the military was the recession. And that's when I discovered uh, YouTube politics through and I quote fucking Ray William Johnson. Not even <laughs> kidding. He used to do like videos, right? Uh -huh. And then he switched over to like the shit he was doing um, yeah. with like the videos or whatever. Um, but yeah, that show was called Political Gangster, and it was terrible, but, like, it kind of got me interested into politics. 
Like um, all these libertarians for you, and then it was like uh, Philip DeFranco's stuff. It was like, oh my god. Oh no, but that's the thing. Well, I think it's partially because I joined the military, right? So, and then I was kind of like not really like not really looking into politics because I was kind of busy with the military shit, right? But I was kind of keeping up with whatever Ray William Johnson was doing and like you know his videos there. Um, and then when I, like, the, the small period between when I got lupus and getting out of the military is, like, around the time that I met Gracie. And that's when I discovered, like, Philip DeFranco and his shit, which he called himself a libertarian, and I assume he still is. I don't know. Uh, yeah, and, like, Philip DeFranco politics is... Is like just very kind of like liberal, yeah, libertarian, liberal kind of like, you know, believing yeah. in all the you know self-made man stuff and. Oh know. yeah, like being the sort of like, you know, not all cops are bad. There's only a few bad apples, like that shit. Mm, uh, yeah. And I, I was definitely down that road, you know, where I was like, yeah, there's only just some cops that are bad, mm. um, and like. That was I was actually pretty recent when I was still like in that group with cops. Um, not too recent, but then I kind of like weaved between, you know, uh, being a lib. Uh, Gracie got radicalized way faster than I ever did, but we were still kind of on the same trajectory of like, you know, becoming more left leaning. Mm. Um, and uh, and a lot of stuff gracie ended up teaching me like we have this one thing that we recorded when we were doing still doing like feminist critique the podcast um where i was like defending something and gracie was like absolutely fucking not and i was like but what about this and then gracie's like no and it just like i had to like take that step back and like really think about it um and i was like oh yeah damn she's right so and uh, and then I also this was when I was like working in Peace River, but I met my friend Donnie, who um, we've had on you know the show before a few times. Um, turns out Donnie was a communist, but didn't really tell me. But I would always go to Donnie and be like, "Hey, Donnie, what do you think about this?" And he'd be like, "Well, you know, you know, blank, blank, blank. And I'd be like, that's a really good point, Tawny. <laughs> um, so I kind of laugh about that because I'm like, man, I it was really, it was all fucking coming along, you know, sooner or later. Um, but the thing with, like, I guess my anti-cop stuff was, uh, <laughs> um, I would have to say the one George Floyd absolutely in the way that um, an online friend of mine and Gracie's reaction to that, which was mm. like a thing where I was like, yeah, absolutely fucking not. Cause he was a cop, mm. uh, in New York <laughs> of all places. Um, yeah. and then also the, the mass shooting in Nova Scotia and just how much the cops fucked that up too. Uh, also radicalized me, but, and what made it, kind of messed up too was the you know cop friend of ours ended up getting in like a hell of a lot of trouble because he pulled his gun on unarmed protesters in New York and this was after we stopped talking to him during the summer but it just like it, it was one of those things where we were like yeah fuck no kidding like yeah I can't believe we thought this person was decent. Damn. Yeah. What was the thing that you disagreed with Gracie about? Oh, um, I think we were talking about um, people living in rural communities mm. um, and like the reason why they're kind of racist is because of you know, X, Y, and C. It was like very a liberal, you know, set. Mm -hmm. And Gracie, <laughs> living in a rural community, was like, that's no fucking excuse. Mm. And um, 
like looking at that conversation now, I'm very ashamed of it because uh because I had that, you know, liberal mindset. So mm. I mean we all start off somewhere. <laughs> yeah. I like to think I'm kind of a better person, but I still have a lot to learn. Um, that being said, that learning will be done on my own time <laughs> or like done through myself uh, and listening to other people rather than, you know, yeah. I'm just asking questions. Hmm. Not going to go on any Twitch debates with liberals. Fuck. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. I can't. I can't with some of the shit on there. Like, I'm sure you've seen some of it. It is. Yeah. Fuck. It's um, fucking wild. I'm going to start hosting debates on my my Twitch. <laughs> yeah, you're going to bring yeah. Richard Spencer on? Yes. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Oh, it's an uh, American neo-Nazi. That was the whole thing that everybody was freaking out a couple of, like, last week was some fucking lib brought him onto their show. Yeah, no, I, I, I've made my stance on, like, debates very clear. It is... It is nothing. Yeah, I was going like that. Yeah, no, it's absolutely nothing. I, you will not see me on a debate, and you will not see me hosting debates. Oh, well, I think your opinion on debates is objectively wrong. Debate me. Debate. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, that is uh, straw man or whatever, right? Like ad, that's, that's how you an do ad hominem. It. Oh, and, and ad hominem. Okay, cool. Mm. Um, and then I just keep asking. You're like, you should just keep asking questions. And then before I'm able to answer them, you ask another question, right? And you just keep doing that. Yeah. I'm just asking yeah. questions. And then it kind of gets like a that sea lioning thing, right? Where they're like, uh, you were rude to me. I'm just here asking questions. So why is it that you feel this particular way? Why can't you explain it to me? Yeah. Are you a coward? And you're just like, shut the fuck up. Like, I'm going to block you. I can't. Yeah. Um, it's, it's like, and, and even when, like, I mean, when, when, when people come in, right, like, I, like, so, so sometimes it gets frustrating when people come in and then they're like, you know, oh, tell me about this specific thing and stuff like that. And sometimes I'll like, sometimes I'll be like, first of all, we're not talking about that right now. Or, you know, I won't be bothered with it. I'm not here to like, you know, hold your hand through everything. But sometimes it's like, you know, it depends on how they are. If If, if they're open to listening and stuff like that and not just like trying to gotcha you. Uh, but other than yeah. that, it's a waste of time. Because you have to, you know, because it happens so much that you just sit there and having to explain certain things over and over and over again. And it's like, you don't get time for that. Yeah. Please explain to me in detail how, like, race skull science works. And, and please explain yeah. to me, like, why it's, why it's wrong. <laughs> like I have like 16 articles written by white supremacists about like why it actually yeah. makes a lot of sense like please like show me like scientific evidence for like why why it doesn't hold up and shit like that it's like well I don't I don't fucking have that prepared yeah doesn't mean that you are like that you have a point in all this yeah so, of like, course lately it's it's a lot of people coming in like, what's your opinion on the Ukraine thing? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm not talking about that right now. For a while, yeah. it was the China Uyghur situation. Yeah. What's your opinion, what's your on, opinion on Stalin? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I still get that a lot. I haven't gotten that very much lately. There's been other stuff that's been taking precedence, I guess. Yeah. 
But also, what is your opinion on Stalin? <laughs> I like the metro he built in Moscow. Nice. With this, with the, with the spoon that he ate all the grain with, yeah. dug it out. <laughs> he needed the calories to 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 dig it out. <laughs> <laughs> It's like one of my favorite fucking memes so much. <laughs> Where it's Stalin Kirby. I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's just like with, with like we watch the the. I mean, this is of course like a part of like materialism, like the way you look at history and stuff like that. But it's it's also something that seems very obvious. But it's like you know, does something make sense? Right, like because sometimes people have all these like really, really ridiculous like cons on like history and stuff like that on like, you know. But then don't think about the practicality of certain things. Mm. Uh, so there's a lot of like misconceptions, right? Like that we watched a video about like some fashion. I think she was like a fashion historian or whatever. But like talking about just random things, like just this assumption that everybody in the past were essentially like stupid or unintelligent, and 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 and, and that's not the case. I mean, people of course didn't do things; they they did things because it made sense at that point, right? And they wouldn't do something if it was completely worthless, right? Like, you know, like how she gave the example of like medieval armor and stuff like that. How people was like, oh, well, why are they they're super clunky and stuff like that? It's like if it was super clunky they would not wear the armor because it would be useless, right? There's a purpose to to why they did certain things, right? And it, that's with the, like, the, you know, when it comes to, like, the famine and stuff like that, it's it's just literally like, okay, what was the reason? Why would Stalin do this? <laughs> like, it's like, what what's the motivation? What's the point? Fun. And just that breaks it all. Yeah, it's just fun. It was just evil. Yeah. Well, obviously, right? So, um, but no, I know what video that is because I was, I wanted to watch it, but I never got a chance to do it. Um, she's a great historian, but um, focuses a lot on fashion and then like, comedy in that sort of like regard. But yeah, there is really this kind of like mentality that like people of the past were, you know, stupid and like, Mm. when it's like well no they weren't and we're also looking at like a certain perspective because most of the time we don't actually look at the history like the stories of normal working class people we're always looking at the stories of like these rich bougie pieces of shit right so yeah and we're also looking at history with the benefit of hindsight that too. Yeah, yeah yeah knowing like like we learn when we learn history we don't learn everything that ever happened we learn the important bits and pieces of information mm -hmm. uh, like information that people at the time might have been you know missing out on or, or not considered very important but we learn them and we learn that they're important you know like conflict in the balkans and such and then it's easy to be like well obviously first world war was going to start in the balkans how could no one like how could no one see that that was going to happen that is why these like the the war, YouTube war historian aren't like you, you know people who are like really into like war history like are some of the most frustrating uh, people because like they yeah they're very like involved in that whole hindsight kind of thing. It's like you know it was uh, like that person. He was oh my god what a what a fool like why would he ever. Do Something like this. Me, I'm here. I'm such a genius, tactical mind that could like figure this out, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, where a bro, where a boost? I've never heard that term before, Andrew. So, uh, it's like German military enthusiasts. Oh, yeah, that is a red flag, to be honest. <laughs> like, if you're yeah. a little bit too into uh, German tanks, it's like. Yeah, that, that's, they're, that's they're a red flag. Much, like, I think a red flag is being somebody really into World War III. And it's like... Mm, World War Three. 
<laughs> World War Three. No, but World War Two. Yeah, because yeah. it's just like, mm, what's the what's the reason? Yeah. Why are you really into that? Yeah. What's up, Sean? And like you know, German tanks and stuff. Just like, oh, yeah. I just think like, oh, the Panzer Four was like a really good, you know, yeah. feat of engineering or whatever. It's like. <laughs> It's clearly superior to those Russian tank. I I only care about the tanks, though. You know, I'm not a Nazi. Yeah. It's like also, weirdly I mean, interested just, in like Nazi military history. Yeah, just just also like I just I just really like Hugo Boss. Okay. Like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like say what you will about the Nazis, but their uniforms. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like. There is such a thing as like being genuinely interested in those kinds of things, like being interested in tanks and stuff like that. Uh, we're not saying that automatically if you like, you know, military history, you're a fascist. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it, it's something that you see a lot among fascists. Yeah. So be careful what company you keep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, and I'm going to ask Azure <laughs> this. Oh. Do you notice that, like, in Japan, in some of their, like, stuff, a lot of people are really into German history? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's understandable, like, with the different histories that connect. <laughs> Yeah. No, I mean, it's a lot of, like, European, like, medieval stuff as well in, in like, mm, anime and yeah. popular culture. No, I just, I have a, um, something that I've, like, noticed a lot uh, with reading, uh, reading manga, um, that there's a lot of inspiration from, like, Nazi shit, and I'm just like, oh, oh, mm. <laughs> like, some stuff is just, really hard to watch now because of that mm. but you know yeah uh some authors distance themselves from it and their narratives and called cringe helsing it's a, that helsing is like the only anime that i have actually seen something from and it was my cousin that showed me helsing when i was younger mm. i thought helsing was anti though like the Nazis are the bad people in that in that series. It's been a while since I watched I don't know. it. So I watched like two episodes, so I just know that he killed people. Hmm. Oh. Yeah. Well, I think some... I think it was Zotz was watching Orin High School Host Club, like, on stream, <laughs> and then, like, had to stop because there was, like, you know, some characters that were fucking yikes. Uh. Author's overtly pro-Japanese feudalism as well. He's a weirdo samurai nerd. I mean, who is not a weirdo? A uh, samurai nerd. I know I am. <laughs> Sucker for the samurais. Yeah. Yeah. I, I what I think it was like famous horse was watching this Vice thing about some really strange cult in Japan, mm -hmm. like the Happy Religion or something. Is I don't know. Aron. Aron. They have like a political party. They're like super nationalist and like they taught like it is like a cult, right? Like that that the leader is a god, but they had a political party that like ran on like just going back to like the Japanese Empire and like uh, it was the was the leader of the cult's wife that was like the running in the party. And she promised if she comes to power she will immediately carpet bomb the DPRK. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Oh my god. They did not win. Happy Science, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds familiar. 
But it was Vice, that documentary. I, I only watched like a snippet of it, and I kind of wanted to watch it on stream at some point. Uh, so I might, like, we might watch that on my stream someday. It's like, I don't know. Some of those, they, it was called like the weirdest, the weirdest cult in, in Japan. Mm -hmm. And like, he apparently, like, uh, does these things where he, like, channels people, uh, through, uh, like, you know, I'm in contact, like, and then, like, the, these people talk through him. So, like, uh, Margaret Thatcher talks, and apparently Margaret Thatcher is, like, really into Japan expanding its empire. Uh, <laughs> when, uh, when she talks through him. Um, mm. which, and to be honest, doesn't sense. quite sound like Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> no, 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 that makes sense. <laughs> They had their own anime. Yeah. No, I, I, it was, yeah, Famous Horse was watching it um, uh, uh, yesterday, I think. And I was like, ooh, I better not watch too much because I was like, this seems interesting. Mm. Damn. Yeah, it's like, wild <laughs> yeah i think i heard some of it but i don't know I'm have you sure. heard about the the that that cult before uh, uh there was one like religious cult in japan that did like a uh, Released like cyanide in the train station or something. Mm. Uh, it was like I don't 90s, think it was. Right? I don't think it's the same one though. Yeah. That was also like a cult around like a guy. Who, I think he was like. Did he call himself like the brother of Jesus Christ or something like that? Yeah, that's a different one. Brother of Jesus Christ. Yeah, something Is that like the Jesus one, uh, <laughs> Alm Shin uh, Rikyo? Maybe. I don't remember. I think that was the one. Yeah, that one was the uh, subway attack in 95. Uh, uh, yeah. It's like, yeah, no. There, there was, uh, I said this, but it was funny because, like, um, uh, Wired, I think, they had one of those things where, like, you ask, like, they ask questions about cults to, like, an expert or something. Mm. And then the expert was, like, talking and uh, about cults and so on. And they said, I used to be in a cult. Like, they, they that was stated in the beginning. And I just had this, like, feeling. It's like, what if she says the cult is, like, basically she was in, like, a left-wing party or something. Mm. And then she explains what cult she was in. She was basically in, like, a militant communist organization. And she was like, yeah, I was in a cult. Mm. So, like, uh, where, where do you, which organization was it? It didn't say, right? Oh. I, I know there is the, uh, is it the Georgetown one that was supposed to be Marxist, right? Or was it the, another one? I know there are, supposed, uh. but, like... Because cause this is something that's come up a lot. Like, I mean, my dad, like, literally believes that, that like, communists are cult-like, right? So it's mm -hmm. not, like, impossible to, like, be, like, she was just genuinely in. I think she said she was in, like, a like a white offshoot of, like, the Black Panthers. Like, a Black Panther, like, sister organization or whatever, right? Like... Mm -hmm. Well, wasn't that the whole thing with uh, Jim Jones... Yeah. Right, um, and people's, Diana. People's temple, people's church. Yeah, the people's yeah. temple, and that was like, um, a quote unquote left wing cult, and that's because, and, and Jim Jones himself was like a white guy from Indiana, but like he recruited like people of color distinctly because. Like to you know, put this together. Mm -hmm. 
that's what and it's also like because people still make that fucking reference of like you know drinking the kool-aid or whatever right and it's like Mm. um people died like shut the fuck up that's Mm. not a funny joke yeah i mean but but yeah like the the point was i think the lady like she wasn't in like i think she legitimately just was in like a revolutionary organization and she was like i was in a cult right like that that's that's the impression i got right so basically it's like why i left the left yeah Okay. <laughs> okay, so mode is don't drink the Kool-Aid. Oh, I'm sorry, Kay. I didn't mean to. <laughs> no, I think it's fine. It's like, come on. Come on. Is that trams? That I love those. Yeah. Dump tram. Is that that looks like you know, like there's this place. I don't remember which European, if it is Germany, but they they've built these kind of like uh, uh, these land barricades to prevent like the ocean, right? Yeah. And like they have trained like they the citizens there because there's actually people that live out on those like things, and yeah. they have to like maintain the barriers. And they all basically have their own little trains like yeah, this to get around. I've seen that. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. hop off because they're starting construction. And I doubt you want to hear like hammering and drilling like oh, that okay. in the background. All, all right, right. I'll talk to you all later. All right. See ya. See ya. Yeah. yeah no, okay, don't cool. worry about it. <laughs> Come on. Like, you know. We have fun. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I love those, the tram there. Yeah. I mean, it's just like a portable steam engine tied down to a little, like, metal carriage with a rope, which I think is really cute. Well, well, yeah, I mean, that's essentially what those those trams are, because they were, like, homemade. Like, it's not like, you know... It was actually flavor eight, so it was off brand. Uh, they didn't besmirch the good name of of, of Kool Aid. Well, that's good. <laughs> it didn't taint it. <laughs> Could you imagine? Yeah, the the backlash. There was like no. <laughs> As we at Kool Aid, we strongly reject what happened. And <laughs> yeah, I mean it's good. They don't support it. <laughs> yeah. That would have been weird. Yeah. Just be like, I'm glad they chose Kool Aid because Kool Aid is really <laughs> great. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Ashley was like, don't joke about it. And then, like, Ashley leaves and we meet and start joking about it. <laughs> I don't know where to put the tram depot. I'll just put it here. And move it later. Don't have any electric trams yet, I don't think. But I think I want to replace this, like, really short bus line with, uh. Oh, yeah, here it is. With Vienna horse tramways. I also do not understand how you're playing this as like at norm. I I have this game sped up like nonstop. Oh, I mean, I, I've been fast forwarding oh, okay. for most of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Is it possible to just have rail and bicycles? I don't think there are bicycles in the game, unfortunately. You can't have, you know, like pedestrian footpaths and stuff and rail, yeah. You can, you can if you want, just completely get rid of all roads. 
um or i mean at least like inner or in in yeah intercity roads still need some at least streets for like houses to be built next to but i th i think theoretically you can have a completely car free city it reminds me of a dark at home political lesbianism what 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 did what were we just talking about the kool-aid thing Oh, zeros, yeah. I mean, buses, like, for now, yeah, like, obviously, like, society is created around, like, oh, the cold thing. Yeah, I mean, society is, is created around roads, and, like, of course, like, buses, as society looks today, like, buses is, is, is a good way to do certain things, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's, uh, uh, obviously, if, if you do restructure just the infrastructure to not be... Uh, be focused around roads, then buses will just become less useful. But for now, they're useful, very useful. Yeah. I mostly just like trams because they're cool. <laughs> trams are cool. No. Anything that goes on rails. Yeah. Pretty dope. I've always been like just yeah like that whole like model train set stuff is just something i've like always wanted as a kid yeah i was really jealous at some like uh, my friends who had the you know like the the lego like the like the big they were like bigger rails it's like, i think it was like technic lego that mm. had the trains with the engine on it and yeah I really wanted that, but it was too expensive. Mm. Yeah, I do like the horse-drawn trams. Yeah. They're neat. Yeah. And also, um, there was like those, um, you know, those AI improved old videos like colorized, right? Like yeah. of like the roads were just pure chaos, like with the trams, the cars, the horses, the yeah. pedestrians, like there's just no rules. Yeah, this one, uh, like upscaled 60 FPS video. Like if an old film taken on board a Gothenburg tram in like 1906. I think I think we I saw uh, maybe we watched that. I think. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I like the one. The there's one of like the German one that the suspended, uh, one. Yeah. That that one is really cool. They did so much, like, experimentation right before they, like, figured all their shit out, right? Like... Yeah. Uh, because they were, like, trying to figure out the best way to do shit. Mm. Always wanted to live on a train. There's, like, luxury trains that you can... could basically live on. True, but, like, trains... The noise, though, would be an issue. Even though some trains are really quiet, they're not completely quiet. Yeah. And being in an environment that has, like, like noise at a certain level constantly would probably eventually become bothersome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I, I watched that. You posted something on Twitter earlier about uh, X2000, X like, going to the U.S. Yeah. That was pretty neat. I've yeah. never been in an X2000 in my life. Really? Yeah, no. Like, never, never had a reason to. Never taken the train to Gothenburg or Stockholm? Well, soon still get... 
you know, like it's pretty slow though. Yeah, but it's like, you know, like it doesn't require any like you, like planning ahead, booking anything. It's just, mm. you know, you jump on a train like you would anything. Yeah. A bit of training will do the trick. It's it's like the it's like Sweden's high speed rail. Yeah. Or train. Um, technically, actually, it's uh, better categorized as higher speed. Um, technically, yeah. for it to be high speed rail, it would have to reach uh, a speed of three hundred kilometers an hour, and X two thousand only reaches two hundred. Yeah. Or no, it's like 260, I think. Yeah. Like German ICE, yes. ICE 3. Yeah. Yeah, so, but no, never really had the reason. And like, I don't go to Stockholm or anything. I did go quite a lot back and forth to from like, from where I live uh, to Valby, which mm. is was like a three-hour train your, your journey, mm. uh, but just also in Stavanger, like no, ah oh, no, crashed into oh. the the shosk. Yeah, what do you call that in English? Kiosk. Kiosk. I guess. Well, kiosk is more like a building like yeah, it's that. Like a, like a one when room. When I think ki the word kiosk in English, I think of like a tourism information bureau or like a, like a hole in the wall. Yeah, no, I think it's just mostly the building. Like it, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what's in it. it. It's it's just the building that is, it's a kiosk, whether it's mm -hmm. like you can buy hot dogs there or tourist information. It is a kiosk because of the building, mm. you know. Of course, in Swedish, uh, shosk is, is more like a food thing. Yeah. I think. I mean, yeah, if, if someone is like, stand. I'm going to TLT shosken, then I'm assuming they're going to get something to eat, you yeah. know. Could also be like a very small like local corner uh, shop yeah yeah corner corner store convenience store where is that fucking thing now i can't find it <laughs> oh here it is i want to move it to like over here is good yeah drive through the tram drive through yeah. <laughs> it's for everyone with their personal trams yeah just like i'll have uh uncle vanya <laughs> what are the menu items called at uncle vanya's uncle vanya menu russia uh, I don't know. Washington Post got an article to see what they. Uh, no, they're mostly just crying about. How dare they! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Uncle Vanya food items. Is that it? No, that is something else. I guess there's a pickling company called Uncle Vanya as well to make pickles. That's good. Um. 
I don't know. But, like, obviously, it's, like, it's pretty much already, like, literally better than McDonald's because everything, like, because of the conditions right now is, like, locally sourced and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, so, like, almost immediately. But I assume it's it's not much different, right? Because they literally set up in the, in the restaurant, so they're, like, just probably yeah. just making burgers, like, pretty much almost the same. Yeah. But then, of course, McDonald's has very, like, regional kind of, like, uh, things. Like, I think, like, in, in some countries in, like, Asia, you can get, like, noodles at McDonald's and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of, like, fish stuff at uh, McDonald's in Japan. Mm -hmm. What do we have that's like unique for here? I'm not sure. Don't have like a mashed potatoes. <laughs> no, no, I mean, no meatballs, nothing. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if we have anything that's unique. No. There was there was a chain that's like it's from up north. That I've only seen once, and it was here in town when it opened here called Frasses. Mm -hmm. uh, they had like really good, like, uh, like kind of like dollar menu burgers. Mm -hmm. And it was like, um, it was just like a burger, like a small dollar menu burger basically, but with like barbecue sauce and like coleslaw on it. And it was super oh. good. Interesting. Yeah. I do like coleslaw though. I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Yeah, I, me too. Like I have, I have their T-shirts and posters and everything. So. Yeah. All about the slaw. I stayed up too long that's why like I, over I was supposed to stream today but like i overslept and then i saw that you were streaming right uh or were going to but like i stayed up and i watched this guy basically go through uh the whole uh, uh dante's divine comedy mm -hmm. over the course of like four and a half hours <laughs> uh-huh but it was very interesting. Like, do, have you ever like read or anything? Yeah. The I had never like. Of course, I'd heard about like Dante's Inferno and stuff like that, but I'd never. It was very interesting. Yeah, yeah. No, I read it for a uh, Latin class, like uh, or like Latin and Greek, like classical literature. Mm. Oh so, yeah. I yeah, know it's 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 uh it's definitely interesting. Yeah. No, the the guy was. I mean, I didn't read it. Of course, it was just the guy explaining it, and it was it was kind of funny, like how he he, he like talked about a lot about like politics, right? Because it's essentially like a political hit piece, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you know, uh. The people I don't like. Well, your mom's in hell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, no. It was a lot of, um, of you know, the people that Dante likes and like his heroes and stuff. They all love him. Yeah. He's like a self-insert character, and like, yeah, all the people he like are in heaven, and the people he doesn't like are in hell, being tortured forever with like ironic punishments for like. You know, doing yeah. whatever. <clears throat> what What was very interesting, uh, I mean, is is like um, when it came to the hell, like how, you know, like how low like people like usury and stuff like that was in in hell, right? Like, because that was like, because that like through, I mean, in debt, like the uh, the Graver one talks a lot about how like um uh, money lending and stuff like that was just very very like s considered very sinful right in yeah. a lot of cultures um 
and they were like they were like lower than murderers and stuff like that, way mm. lower. Yeah. Well, which is interesting, right? Because like he he was like saying that like the 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 levels of hell goes like how many people does it affect, right? So it turns out to be like a lot of these things that we like you know, would identify as, like, things that are, like, with capitalism, right? Like, because, like, you know, like, people who commit, like, financial kind of, like, fraud and stuff like that, like, arguably, that is, like, a very serious thing, but it's not considered very serious. I mean, because, like, a murderer gets a really long time, but someone who literally implodes the whole economy gets like, oh, you're in jail for two years, right? Like, which arguably costs even more lives, mm -hmm. uh, you know? Yeah. But that's so... So it was... That was a cool part, like, how that was portrayed in it. Like, they were like, no, like, if you, if you do something like that, that affects a lot of people and has a much wider effect and it's a much more serious offense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wrote a wrote an essay about Dante's Inferno and its uh, relationship to Islam. Yeah, uh, I've forgotten like most of it by now, but I remember researching about it and found it interesting. Like, uh, Prophet Muhammad is in hell because he split the Abrahamic religions. He created a new yeah. sect. Uh. Voted third party. <laughs> yeah. But what's interesting is that Caliph Ali is also in hell because he created Shia Islam. So he split Islam and he's in hell for that. Oh. Not, there's not any of the, the enemy of my enemy like stuff. It's just like, you know. You no, fucked over my enemies. <laughs> now you're also yeah, here. No. no. The, this is the splitting of like God's children into different opposing sects is like the, what's the sin. Yeah. There's a couple of Muslims who are in like purgatory i don't know if I, I can't remember if any muslims made it into heaven in the dante's divine comedy but I, uh, at least a couple made it into purgatory for being like good people who just like unfortunately weren't christian you know yeah yeah no i think there was some because like the, the the way that the guy explained it was because like Dante asked this like what about the people who never uh never got given the choice mm -hmm. one well, and and Dante in the thing says right like well they were always presented with a choice uh in one way or the other right like but they would like they had rejected it or whatever right mm -hmm. so like they they claim that you know everyone is presented with the choice even if like you know the choice of god's love even if uh, that is not like christianity is not familiar with them or whatever the the path to god is always offered mm -hmm. that makes sense it doesn't but no <laughs> it, it's like uh, sometimes like because i'm not of course i'm not religious right but like Seeing like people like who are like theologians, right? Like religious, like they've really studied it, and then they're like having debates about like scripture and like you know the whole lore of it is very interesting to see because it's like yeah, it, it, it it's it's like it's like a political debate, but about just religion, about like oh this person was not. The, like the this person and you believe that that person was this person but he really wasn't and i'll prove it by repeating this line in in this holy text <laughs> yeah which is just that's just literally us <laughs> what 
Stalin said. <laughs> yeah, I say that all the time. <laughs> yeah. It's very important to me what Stalin had to say on different matters. Yeah. I mean, why wouldn't it be? You are a major Stalinist. Yeah. Me too. So it's okay. Uh, no. No. Is that a tram? No, that's a train with that's nothing train. on it. I'm just making some plastic. Oh. I never made any plastic. Why not? Because, like, the whole supply line, to because it's used to get into the goods, and then you need the, 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 the steel, and it's, like, it just seems so complicated. It is. But I assume it gives a higher bonus to growth than the other ones? No. It's, it's just, just more profitable. Insane. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Just for the fact that there's more steps to it, or because of the wares being worth more? I think both. Hmm. Uh, okay, you know what? I'm just not realizing that I'm not, I don't really have anywhere to send this plastic yet. So I'm not yeah. going to bother. Uh, let's do this. Tearing it all down. I uh, just some of it for now. I can rebuild it later. I'll just do um, do a simple uh, crude oil to refinery to fuel or to plastic. I mean, mm. can make a simple profit off of this. I just got some electric trams that I want to put down. Nice. I buy horses. I like those stations a lot. The the like drop ones. Oh, what? The drop shaped or the tear shaped uh, 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 stations. Yeah. Probably only gonna need one of these actually. This one can carry 11 people, which is good. Note, note. Those trams are cool. Yeah. It's like the ones in Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> that you were like, oh, look, tramps. Yeah. <laughs> the kid on the tram. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't like tramps? Yeah, it's pretty neat. Except the American automobile industry. Yeah. Henry Ford killed the tram. Yeah. And it was a fascist. Yeah. Coincidence? Yeah, there, there is some some overlap there, it seems. Yeah. Some Jesus. overlap. A lot of people want to go the middle half for some reason. Yeah. 100 people waiting here. I wonder why. <laughs> Just, like, people specifically want to go from 
Bromgrad to Middleham. The the passenger service from from Asherville to Middleham is is nowhere near as demanding. Yeah. Like everyone wants to leave Gromgrad, it seems. Wow. <laughs> No, it's uh, it's because uh, uh, the people in 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 my city has more disposable income to do things like traveling to other places, while your people are poor and stuck. Okay, so not you're without a fucking capitalist, I guess. <laughs> no, I'm the I'm the <laughs> communist. Okay. <laughs> You are a goat-based uh, theo theocracy. Yeah. What's wrong with that? No, no, nothing. Absolutely nothing. He was paid for damage sent to Ford affiliated factories in Germany during World War II. I can believe that. Yeah, yeah, no, they didn't. Uh, the United States paid. Uh, it was multiple companies. Like they, they, they paid the companies of like that got bombed. Uh, it was more than f like. It was a bunch of American companies that had their factories or facilities bombed in Nazi Germany, and the U.S. government reimbursed them. Mm. Yeah. And then the Marshall Plan just gave Western Europe, like, a mountain of free money. Yeah. To, like, re-industrialize and join the West. Yeah. And then coincidentally, you got every like city that was bombed during the war, like London and Amsterdam and stuff. They took that as like an opportunity to rebuild the city from scratch, and they built them all as like car-centric cities, mm -hmm. designed around like suburbia and highways and shit. Yeah. And it wasn't until like the seventies that people started thinking well, maybe this was a bad idea. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that's the thing with like city planning is like, you know, it takes so long sometimes for them to like realize their mistakes. And at, at the point where they realize their mistakes, it is so utterly too late. Yeah. <laughs> it's like. eighty-one sixty. Expensive. Expensive. Oh no, the meters, the meters. Yeah. yeah. Big trains. Long boys. What I call them. Oh. That's. Yep, yep. Uh, what was this? Oh. Wait. Damn it. No, not that. That. There we go. No here, put a signal here, a signal here, and that should be. Uh, 
I mostly prefer longer trains as opposed to like uh, a larger amount of shorter trains. Is it just, I don't know, I think it helps with traffic. Yeah. Trains don't have to stop as often. Yeah. And it looks cool. It's just have very long trains. Long trains are cool indeed. This one is maybe a bit too long. It's, it's kind of struggling. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, it's starting to... Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> speeding up. <but. laughs> By the time it reaches max speed, it's time to start slowing down. <laughs> yeah. You can always just, like... If you don't have a powerful enough locomotive, you can just strap on more of them. Yeah. You have two locomotives pulling the wagon. Yeah, I don't know how often that was actually done with steam engines specifically, but it's common to do with diesel engines. Yeah. Uh, electric ones too, right? Uh, no, I, don't, I can't recall. No, electric locomotives usually, unless they're pulling freight, um, you just get the one. Mm -hmm. um, and usually, electric locomotives pull shorter trains. But if you're, I mean, if if you're on a freight line uh, that's pulling like heavy cargo, then you can have multiple electric. Locomotives, uh, coupled together, but I still don't know how common that is. Mm. I'm not sure if there's a reason for why diesel engines are like more often than not coupled together, because I like a lot of the time, especially with freight, you see like two or even four diesel electric locomotives. Pulling no. one, uh, one uh, train. Um, but yeah, I don't see that with with electric locomotives as often. Yeah. I don't know, when the, in this game, it seems like the electric trains are stronger than the diesel trains. Uh, that might be true. Uh, though I think they might have a lower tractive force. Oh, hell yeah. Now we get my f fucking, my favorite. Uh, vehicle, modded vehicle. It's the the motherfucking tractive and traction engine. Oh, that I, that I made yeah. a TikTok about. <laughs> there is, uh, there is, uh. In the UK, there was this character that apparently was very famous. And he spent all his time, like, tearing down chimneys. But he also uh, restored one of those and, like, literally drove around on vacation with the family uh, in one of these. And there's, like, uh -huh. tons of YouTube videos of it on... Uh, of him uh, on... Um, and it's like from the seventies. Like it's it's like apparently very popular in the in the UK. Oh. Huh. That's interesting. Can you confirm uh Everton? 
Let's see if I can find what it's called. I like that they whistle before they leave the station too. What's it called? It's called a traction engine. No, Fred Dibna is the person. Yeah. It's apparently like a 70s like the tv just followed his life around because like he all, all he like he worked with like tearing down chimneys like if he couldn't like do the thing where they like you, you know where they like chop it out and prop it up with wood and then they burn the wood so that the chimney falls down uh they would have to like go up top and just dismantle it from the top down like just brick by brick and that's what he did. And they like followed him around, but he also restored one of these and just literally just cruised it around. I like that it that they're actually pulling the same wagon. Like the the horse and the traction engine. It's like it's the same wagon model. Is this one is pulled by a traction engine instead of Horses. Yeah. I don't know how nice. many of these I would need. When did I have 16? All of them. works very awesomely now it's you just you just transport goods around supply cities with goods the goods grow it's kind of like it's it's very reminiscent of like i mean i haven't played open open t g g whatever it was called uh but i know um sid meyer's railroads you worked like this as well mm. i love that game I, you basically you have cities where people live with industrial, commercial, and residential areas, and then you have different industries spawned on semi-random locations across the map. Um, all the goods want to go somewhere. All the people want to go somewhere, and it's your job to set up different routes uh, and try to get, you know, attract people to using your modes of transportation. Um, and and uh, like, if you're if you set up like a very efficient, like very frequent public transportation option, then not only will people be more likely to take that as opposed to cars, but they will also be more likely to want to take it in general. Mm. Um, like just out of convenience, so like just more like transportation option will actually like make more people want to travel and it will ultimately like increase the size of your cities and if you provide cities with uh, goods as well then they also grow which also means more people and the need for more transport nice yeah i am quite a fan of options as well Yeah, Cargo Tram's gotta be my favorite though. Yeah, it's dope. Little, little moving hut, little moving kiosk. Yeah. Just choo choo. Wonder. I 
could take these fuel trucks, drop off the fuel here, and then have the cargo trams take it into the city. That could work. Mm -hmm. uh, let's set up line. And here to here. Call it C tram. You all to Asherville and take Let's see here. Full load. Load up on fuel specifically and unload fuel. And then I gotta make sure that this one also doesn't load up on anything. Else, let's see, this one takes bread and this one also takes bread, otherwise, they're gonna get all confused. Yep, there's the best that. city transport, I think. Uh, it's still a very car centric city, even if they are improving their like metro and tram networks and stuff. Mm. A lot of different cities around the world have, you know, like, arguably the best transport. Um, it's hard to, like, do an objective measurement of, like, which city is the best. Malmö is pretty good. Uh, when it comes to Sweden. Yeah. As I built the, built the tunnel... All right, look at this. They're actually these uh, trams with uh, oil tankers. So cool. Look at this. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. Super cute. Right, and then we take this and... Here. Uh, unload fuel and then don't go there. Now the trucks don't have to carry, uh, don't have to go as far. The trams can... <laughs> yeah, sure that works. Um, okay, that's not gonna do it. I have to do it like this. Gotta fucking that's gonna do it, right? Yeah. All right, now the cargo trams can Why? Why are you doing this? What what? Why would you sit there? Hang on, let me make it shorter. I guess I like, can't get through now. What the fuck? Uh, okay. What if we put this one 
here. That way shouldn't be in the way of anything. And then the these guys wait, where's it? These guys can drop off their fuel here. And we should need this. Give me, give me one moment. Right back. All right. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and if you're wondering why we would want to do this, uh, have the trucks drop off the fuel at this depot and then have a, a tram, a cargo tram, run into the city. Uh, it's because a cargo tram is only one vehicle, but it carries a lot more cargo. Whereas trucks are many vehicles and they carry not as much. And the more vehicles you have, the more emissions you have. And your towns don't like emissions. So to lower emissions, I'm actually sending this very pollution-y steam train uh, into the city to, to drop off fuel. But it actually lowers emissions because it's only one vehicle as opposed to many, many horses that would come in and make noise and shit all over the street. So, in the long term, uh, it's it's better for the city. And also, they're they're faster. So this last like stretch of the of the way to the city, they can travel like. Not quite twice, twice as fast, but like 50% faster than... Well, yeah, no, maybe like 75% faster on average than... Than the trucks or the... Yeah. Oh god. Uh, okay... Hang on. You... Here, put you here. And then that one isn't going to be able to get there, but that's... Uh, okay, I'll just sell one of these. I'll just make a fucking separate depot over here and just make sure that they're connected but they don't share like one space and that way we can actually have have these guys go here instead that way they're, they're gonna be out of the way Is there like a... No, it doesn't seem like there's a supply problem. Just need more grain. Thinking... I mean two here. I'm thinking we... Sell one of these. And we modify these other two. More powerful... Locomotives. Uh, don't know what the maximum length for these would be. Let's observe. Like 120 maybe? 
Let's see, let's make this guy... Under the... Six... Hundred and twenty-three. Let's just... Push the envelope, see what happens. Maybe... I think it's too long. Yeah, yeah it's too long, okay. 116 it is. That should do it. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Now these trains move faster and they can carry a bit more. Once again, asking for your financial support. Hey, thanks for the donation, Everton. How awesome of you. <laughs> you notice I'm getting tired? <laughs> Present, thank you. I gotta go get something to drink, though. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Oh, I think the train ended up being too long. Uh, yeah, okay. That should be fairly easy to fix, though. Oh, no, 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 you don't do that. There you I like this cute little three cart passenger service. Not a lot of people want to go to Metalham, but you know, there's some of them. And you know, it's 15 people who don't have to travel by, by road. And a few people want to go the other way as well. Uh, there's a lot of people waiting here. We should make a. Uh, Make an electric tram. Move people from the central station to the train station. Terminal 1, electric tram. Buy a tram depot. The catenary. Just a fancy train. Train nerd word for um, overhead wires. Then we'll buy two electric streetcars for Middleham bus line two. Get rid of this guy.
Two axle electric streetcar with an open platform both sides of the Al Algemeine Elektricität Gesellschaft Stadtbahnhalle. What does Gesellschaft mean? Power, right? The General Electric Powered Streetcar. Something. Hallway? What? Stadtbahn Street. Way, railway, streetcar, something. Halle? What is Halle? Kinda weird to think that electric streetcars existed alongside, like, horse and buggies. But they did. For a long time, actually. Before the automobile. Electric trams are from before cars. Which is real weird to think about. If you look at, like, modern cities like Amsterdam and stuff, they're, like, modern bendy trams, and you think, like, that's a newfangled invention for, from, like, environmentalism. No, from electric trams, they were invented in, like, 1970, but no. Like, 1890. 1885? I should say. Yeah, they got electric cars before it was cool. Before Elon did it. Uh, yeah. Cars that travel on rails and carry a bunch of people at a time. Yeah. Even better than a Hyperloop. Much better. Oh, I think I see why so many people want to travel to Middleham. There's no road. But, like, the road connecting Gromgrad to Middleham would be, like, from here to here... No, there is no road. Actually, jet like there actually is not a road connecting Gromgrad to Middleham. There's no there's no way to get here other than by by train. You can, you can go to Woburn and Yately. That's it. Those three cities yeah. are isolated. Damn. Yeah, I, I watched uh, Jay Foreman's video about um, tramps in London. Very good. Jay Foreman? Yeah. There's a series on YouTube called Unfinished Oh, yeah, Monday. yeah, that, that, that person. Yeah, yeah, I recently watched some, some of his video about bridges. Yeah. Yeah, he makes good stuff. Yeah. One of them super nerds, just like you. Yeah. He's a Green Party voter. Gross. Yeah. We're all industrialists here yeah. in this house. Exactly. I hate the environment. Yeah. The only color I like is is chimney brick red. <laughs> there are um, a satire party in Sweden called the uh, Bruden Calls Party. Like the I don't know. What is Never heard of it before. What is that in English? Like choke coal? I don't know. It's like a very dirty kind of coal. Oh. Like a satire. It's like a satire of like the Green Party. Mm. Like the, the coal party. <laughs> if, which if you go to like Australia, it's not even satire. It's just like reality. Yeah. It's just the Liberal Party. <laughs> yeah. I really like coal around these parts. 
Oh it's shit. Tasty. I'm ready to build another fucking hotel. <laughs> but, um, we can't get enough of them. Yeah. Wine, liquors, fine tobacco. Park a hotel again. The old crow. Oh, I like this building. God damn it, it's another Parkview Hotel. Next to Hotel Renaissance. Across the street from another Parkview Hotel. No, that's Hotel Renaissance. The shop just says Switzerland on it. Yeah. Do you want to buy some Switzerland? <laughs> you buy like land in the Alps. Yeah. I feel like I should put something in the middle here. Uh, Goodness I'm gracious, Adam something's going on a, like a panel with uh, Dylan Burns. Not surprised. Who's, who's Dylan Burns? Wait. Establishment, Democrat, uh, Democrat, Warhawk, uh, kind of like, you know, the, the oh, I'm a leftist, like, and you, Biden is, is mm. good, and America does good around the world. It's horrible. Famously. But, you know, I like, I like Adam something's videos when it comes to, like, talking about, like, roasting Elon Musk. That, yeah, but, like, it, the politically... Garbage. Hmm. Bunch of these internet dramas. I love drama. Yeah, you get into all the drama, I sure. Oh, absolutely. I know all the drama. Well, yeah. Did you hear Casey Neistat said he was voting for Hillary Clinton? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. There's a lot of drama in, around that. Yeah, there was. <laughs> so much drama. And the dog was like, yeah, I don't think people should influence how people vote, like, by saying their opinions out loud. It should be, like, a private and... <laughs> yeah, democracy and, like, politics, famously, is, like, a private thing. Yeah, yeah. No it's should, it's no like religion, talk. right? Yeah. Like, your political party is a very personal thing to you. You know, it's, it's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people like completely lost it when it came to the whole Russia thing, uh, though. But uh, the Dubai thing, yeah, it was good. And like he did some stuff on like Soviet architecture. But when it comes to like like liberals, whenever they are going to say something good about any like socialist country, it has to end by them shitting on it right like it has to be like of course right like i've just sat here and mentioned all these amazing great things right that you wish you had in your country but let's not forget they're authoritarian and a dictatorship and stuff like that and it's just like oh you were so close like <laughs> come on no yeah. I like this, this uh, mod that adds a little destination board that shows you which yeah. range arrive and when, or which platform. It's really cool. It yeah. just works automatically. 
Oh, and it actually has them. Yeah. The correct. It's got the nice. names of the platforms and everything. Very nice. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's a. Uh, under waypoints, there's a. Uh, a new train waypoint that they added. Yeah. Which, uh, don't know if it works, just if it's gonna do it now, like this first time. Well, what does it do? Uh, wait. It just stops there for a while, or? No, no, no. Uh, see if it works. Oh, it honks, you mean? Yeah. Well, I can't hear your stream, but like, oh. yeah, I assume. Yeah, it honks when it goes past. So you can put those down like before and after stations and stuff, so that trains honk when they leave. Yeah. Womp womp. Now they should, in theory. I don't know if you actually have to add the waypoints to their lines, or if they just do it if they go past. But theoretically, they should honk. And they just go. like tilting trains. I mean, tilting trains is the reason we can, one of the reasons we can go fast comfortably. Yeah, in Sweden. Like it would be horrendous if you. <laughs> yeah. Although, the, I think the first attempt in the UK, uh, it made everyone, like, nauseous. Uh, and they had to, like, scrap it in the end. Because uh, the mm -hmm. first tilting train they did was, like, it made everybody feel super sick. Yeah. And um, when the X2000 toured uh, the US, the, the what's it called, the... Pennsylvania Corridor, I think. Mm. The Northeast Corridor. Uh, where there's now like an electric uh, Amtrak uh, between like Boston and New York, I think. Um, people preferred riding the X2000 because it tilted in, uh, in the curves. And like that specific route in the US is like old tracks. So just like in Sweden, there's a lot of curves, a lot of really sharp turns. Yeah. Um, and they actually toured the German uh, ICE-3, the high-speed train, um, in the U.S. as well, which goes a lot faster, but it had to slow down a lot to get through the curves because it doesn't tilt. Yeah. So, even though the X-2000 only travels like 200 kilometers an hour... Uh, and the the IC three can you know do like three hundred kilometers an hour, or three hundred twenty even. Um, it couldn't go very fast. The IC three couldn't go very fast because it needs like very straight tracks. So when uh, uh, the US ended up contracting Bombardier to make their their new Amtrak trains, and they like took notes from from both the IC three and, and the X two thousand. Yeah. So there, there is some X two thousand influence, in on American trains. That specific nice. one, they don't really use it anywhere, except mm -hmm. like that one corridor. Because the U.S. doesn't like trains. Well, that the U.S. government doesn't like trains. Yeah, goddamn trains, hate it. Yeah, they have this whole like. Uh, marketization ideology around uh, um, around there uh, around Amtrak, the the National uh, Railway Corporation, where like they're they're like required to be profitable, you know. 
uh, or like the, the the stated goal of of Amtrak is to make a profit, not to not to transport people, but to you know to 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 make a profit. No. Like what what it's supposed to do. Uh, shit, hang on. Let me think about this. All right, here we go. Hello, Khan. What was I saying? Something about something? Yeah, Train, probably. Trains. I like trains. <laughs> yeah, that's probably what I was saying. Yep. Oh yeah, marketization, right? Yeah, they they like. I, th I think it's like the U.S. government set up. Uh, it was one corporation called Conrail, and the other one was Amtrak. And basically, the whole the idea at the time was okay. We're gonna create these like nationalized railway corporations, uh, but they have to be run in a way that that where they're like constantly trying to make a profit. And as soon as they are profitable, we privatize them. Like the goal is to like have the government run these railway corporations until such a time when they can become profitable private companies and then just sell them. And with Amtrak, the only reason why Amtrak is still a government like government owned corporation uh, is because they've just never been able to, to like turn a profit because, you know, it's not necessarily profitable to run passenger trains, even though they're convenient and people like them. Uh, and, like, they help the economy, obviously, by moving people around, and especially by moving much more people around much faster and lowering, you know, the amount of money that you, you're you required to spend on, like, highway infrastructure and stuff. Mm. Uh, so, like, in the, in the long term, passenger trains help the economy a lot, but... Uh, you know, the, the neoliberal ideology of the U.S. government since Reagan has just been that, like, anything that it doesn't make money has to be, like, scrapped and done away with and privatized. Even if it, like, it does make money, just not from, like, ticket sales, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, so that's why, like, Amtrak doesn't expand... Pretty much ever, it shuts down like routes that not enough people use. They have like high ticket prices and shit like that. Yeah. And the US people don't has, use has it. This, uh... the... Oh, go ahead. No, yeah, and people don't use it. Like it becomes this thing. Oh, we're not gonna extend anything because people don't use it because it's not efficient enough to use. So that is like we're not going to spend money to extend anything, which would make people use it, right? Like it's this really weird, yeah. Which uh, is like logic, a, yeah. But like an. Entrance here. That would be like. Did this. Uh, I don't know, they would rather go in. You you've made some like really shit posty videos. I was just like, 
because I wanted to see like uh, your your sub count now, right? Uh-huh. And I seen the Trotskyism explained in fifteen seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Thank you. Thought you were laughing about my truck stop. No, no, no. I laughed at Trotsky getting thrown out. Yeah, I also had that Lennon video. Yeah, yeah, with the the slapping. Yeah. There we go. Oh, that's a mod, right? To have the through throughput there. Uh, no, no, that's vanilla. Oh. No, these hmm. fuckers don't realize. Yeah, these goddamn truckers. Those horses are really old. <laughs> <laughs> I think they exchanged the horses when they. Oh, okay. Because I feel like they've been on the road this whole time. I haven't seen them come back at home. <laughs> you know, open TTD. Um... Vehicles will like break down and they have to return to depot to mm. to repair every time. Yeah. Um, and so you have to look at like you have like a wide range of like choices for vehicles and some of them are like they carry a lot of people, they move very fast, they're cheap, but they break down all the time. Mm. And I think if like you have like airplanes that break down, they will like kill everyone on board. Yeah. I don't know what effect that has, other than like you lose the airplane and obviously you don't. Oh shit! Transport. We lost this fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn. I don't know if it Better has like, like, a, like a, an effect where like people are less likely to want to fly with your company or something. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, Open T Three has like this whole like local administration aspect to it, where it's like every town has their own like municipal council. And mm. to, like, make changes, like, build roads and tracks and stuff. Uh, you have to get their permission. And if they like you, you can get them to like you in, like, different ways. But, like, having, you know, uh, stations and stuff that are used often. And, like, sending tours to their town and transporting their mail and stuff. Uh, then they'll, be, like, let you make modifications. But if they dislike you, which they can do if you demolish, like, houses, for example... Or if you demolish trees, or if you have a station in their town that's been abandoned, that's not connected to any line, they hate that, uh, then they would just be like, no, we're not going to let you connect our town up. Like, we're not going to go with your company anymore. And there are, you can have rival, like, NPC companies, like, transport companies. You can, like, have different, like, four different transport companies on, on the same map. Like compete yeah. and so you like you compete against AI or multiplayer. Uh, so like, one town might like have good relations with your company, but bad relations with with another company and stuff like that. It's a pretty interesting dynamic. Nice. I don't have any. Oh, the Catalan video. Yeah, well, that was just a rant video. I just sat down and I spoke what was on my mind at the time after the Catalan referendum. Yeah. It was just on, just on took out your soapbox. Yeah. Exactly. And just like... <clears throat> <laughs> Here's my opinion. Yeah. You're all welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the plane, the plane crashing. <laughs> no, uh, but I'm sure you can find it. If you look up on YouTube, like, Open TTD Plane Crash. Yeah. Yep. I'm gonna have to go get some food, so I'm gonna head out for today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. Wait. Well, I'll see you all later, chat. See you later, bro. Uh, take care, everyone. Bye, bye. Take care, bye.
Yeah, I gotta eat as well. But I hope um, this gave people that insight into what transport fever is like, why I like it so much. Even though it can get frustrating at times. <laughs> Um, if you're interested in this kind of game, but you maybe don't want to drop all the money to get, um, to get Transport Fever 2 specifically, because it's like 30 euros or 40 or something, um, you can get OpenTTD, it's on Steam and it's free and it's open source and everything, all that good stuff. It's a bit complicated, you should watch like some tutorials to like get into it, but uh, Transport Fever was like heavily inspired by uh, Transport Tycoon, which OpenTTD is based on. Uh, so if you play OpenTTD and like l get through like all the jank, it's like it's it's like I don't know. It, maybe it's a bit hard to get into because of the graphics and it's like a bit complicated. Um, but you know, if if you get into OpenTTD, then you would like Transport Fever too, I think, and maybe vice versa. So, I don't know, Open T3 is, 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 is like, it's weird. It's hard to get into, I think. I like, it took me multiple tries, like, trying to, like, get into Open T3 and just, like, stuff didn't work and, like, train signals and, you just, like, I don't know. But, but ultimately, I did end up liking Open T3 and then I heard about Transport Fever. So, I started playing that and... And now I really like it. So yeah, that's it. Open DTD is great as soon as you understand how the train signals work. I know, I've, I feel like I understand train signals perfectly in Transport Fever 2, and I used to understand them sort of in Open DTD. Uh But after I played Transport Fever 2 and then got back to Open DTD, it just like doesn't compute anymore. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Rob Rousseau is live. Maybe send a raid. Uh, yeah. Let's send a raid to uh, Rob Rousseau. Alright, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I might play more Transport Fever 2 in the future. I don't know, this was kind of an unplanned, uh, more or less spontaneous stream. Uh, I just got the idea that I wanted to show it off, show off the game a bit uh, yesterday. But yeah. That's it. I'm gonna go eat. Uh, have a nice rest of your day. Enjoy Robert's stream. Say hello for me. And bye bye.